Good afternoon to all. Magandang hapon po. Uh, on behalf of Solutions Plus team, uh, I'm pleased to welcome everyone to today's kickoff ng Pasig City training on e-mobility. Uh, before we start, uh, we will go through a uh, some basic housekeeping. Kung mapapansin nyo, this session is run as a Zoom meeting, no? as, uh, uh, as opposed to a Zoom webinar. So we will start off our session with the basic housekeeping that you will see on the screen. So first, please note that the session is going to be recorded, uh, but the recording and the presentations will be available for you afterward. Uh, we have muted everyone by default, but when you want to talk later during the discussions, during the Q&A, please let the host uh, or co-host or on-site host know or ra raise your hand in the Zoom so that we can unmute you. Uh, if you have questions, uh, please submit them via the chat box, but, and you're also welcome to use the chat box throughout the session for your comments and questions. Uh, to ease our discussions also later, could we also request that those who are joining us uh, via Zoom uh, to rename yourselves with this uh, naming, of, uh, naming convention, so starting off with your name and then indicating your affiliation. We also see this as aiding us in knowing where the questions are going to come from in the chat box. So lahat po na mga nag-join sa atin uh, via Zoom, kung maari lang po, kung maari lang pong mapalitan ninyo yung name nyo na para ma-indicate din kung anong organization kayo uh, kasama, kasali. And so para pag may questions kayo later during the, the discussion, alam din namin kung saan nang gagaling yung questions. So uh, kung may, I think meron pa mga ilan na wala rin affiliation dun sa Zoom, kung maari lang mapalitan din siya, madatagan lang ng information about your organization or your uh, LGU kung kayo man po ay nanggagaling sa another LGU. So, and then for the on-site attendees in Pasig City Hall Complex, uh, I'm also joined by colleagues no, from Pasig Transport Office, Tanajan Sinasara. Uh, they can receive the questions and facilitate the request from the ground. So yung mga nasa Pasig City, City Hall na complex to sa conference room, I mean, maari yung ibigay or sabihin kina Sara or sa Pasig Transport Team or organizers na kasama ninyo yung mga katanungan ninyo mamaya. Uh, for today, uh, magkakaroon tayo ng live demo mula sa Tojo Motors sa Santa Rosa. At dahil po hindi posible magkita-kita doon, no, ginawa po namin itong session na parang hybrid. So may on-site na limited number din yung mga tao na doon sa Santa Rosa at sa conference room. So for today, we will have a live demo as you will see from our setup uh, later. Uh, we will be joined by friends from Santa Rosa and since it's not possible for us to see each other and meet each other in, uh, in one place and conduct this uh, training in one venue, we are testing a hybrid approach. So we have people joining us from Pasig City, we have people joining us from Santa Rosa Laguna. So um, this is going to be uh, run, at least especially today, no? uh, the, the session is going to be run in a bilingual manner. So we will have English and Tagalog mix, especially with the, uh, the live demo later of the EV101 and the EV parts and battery care. So um, my name is Kathleen, uh, next slide. Uh, and I am representing Clean Air Asia and we are a Solutions Plus project partner. Uh, so for this week, uh, next slide. Um, our agenda is as follows. So for today, November 9, we are going to focus on operation and maintenance of EV. So this is going to be an EV 101 via the live demo. So uh, our focus will be on EV attributes and EV parts. Uh, we'll also touch on uh, battery attributes and care. So for today, uh, we have invited a lot of city level stakeholder groups. So not only in PASIC, as we mentioned, no, this is open to uh, different LGUs then and different uh, stakeholders who have used uh, public electric three-wheelers or locally called e-trikes. So those who have tested this, uh, we are also inviting them to join us. So the users, the drivers, the operators, and the managers are uh, invited to this session. So uh, those also who are transitioning to e-mobility are most welcome to join these sessions. No? Um, 
And tomorrow, uh, November 10, we are going to look more closely at regulations uh, and policies. So the goal is to balance their, safe, their access and their safety. So we'll look at regulations at the local level. How are other countries managing it? Uh, what are the opportunities that we can tap based on uh, the current regulations that we have? What are the challenges still? Um, and how do we... Uh, how do we how do we bring about the necessary uh, uh, changes to the infrastructure so that they are able to uh, seamlessly run and ply the roads? And the third day, November eleven, that's on Thursday, uh, our focus is on EV charging. So our goal is to untangle the basics of EV charging and the different dimensions. So we're going to look at the technical, regulatory, and operational aspects of the EV charging. So we will answer on Thursday some basic questions about charging at city level. So how do we plan for charging infrastructure? Uh, what are the relevant uh, policy and technical considerations? Uh, what would be what are the opportunities for emerging business models in the Philippines? And what have been the past deployments uh, in the Philippines? Uh, what are the different roles uh, uh, of different stakeholders uh, in this development of charging network and infrastructure? No? So that's, that is on Thursday. And on Friday, so November 12, we're going to talk about e-mobility transition at city level, focusing on roles and applications. So we'll try to... Uh, uh, cover a lot on Friday. No? So our goal is to serve, to, to use that session to serve as a platform for both the local and the national government uh, in initiating this, this discussion on developing the strategy for electric mobility transition. So we'll have a little bit more focus on public electric three-wheelers, uh, shared mobility devices, and enterprises and businesses. So what are the potential e-mobility applications? What are the challenges? And what are the needs uh, of these stakeholders from the local government units and the national government, of course? Uh, next slide. Uh, so with that, uh, we'll just give you a, an overview of what's expected from today's session. So after I, I talk, we'll invite uh, Anton from Passing Transport team. He will give you a brief overview of Solutions Plus project and the pilot in that is being developed and that will be rolled out in Pasig City. And then we will hear from Dr. Vanny Biona from Tojo Motors and De La Salle University. He will give a, an EV 101. Um, and then we will proceed to the, uh, the live demonstration uh, from Santa Rosa. Uh, but first, before we proceed, uh, we have two questions for uh, our viewers for today and those who are joining us for today. We would like to know uh, who is in the room. So gusto nating malaman uh, sino ang mga kasama natin this afternoon, uh, whether you're joining us from, from Zoom, from uh, uh, in, in person, in our hubs, or in the conference rooms. Uh, or via the live stream, which type of organization do you represent? So to join this call, uh, we would like to request you to uh, go to another browser, open another browser, and go to slido.com and type the event code 8150588 to answer. So yeah, we have one answer. So uh, we just want to also understand, uh, sino ba yung kasama natin? Do we have people from the local government units bad? Do we have a lot of people joining us who are representing the, uh, the academia? Uh, for some who are in the sites, uh, I'm not sure how the Wi-Fi would, connection would be in those places, but perhaps you could also support them in answering this Slido question. Now. So uh, you can provide, I believe, uh, uh, when you open different browsers, you can provide answers there. So perhaps our team from Pasig Transport can also facilitate this, their entries. So, okay. So again, for those who just joined us, uh, just go to another browser or open kayo sa cellphone nyo ng uh, Chrome or ng browser and go to slido.com and type the event code 815058. And then lalabas yung poll na to, yung question. So let's 
give it maybe one more minute, uh, one to two more minutes, maybe one minute uh, for you to uh, submit your answers via Slido. So we will use Slido for maybe, I think twice today. So we'll have a follow-up question after this one. Uh, later after uh, the first presentation, we'll have uh, two more questions. Uh, just to give us an insight then as to who are in the room and maybe we can also better contextualize the discussions this afternoon, even from the, the demo, the live demo later, uh, we are able to better contextualize in discussions. No? So just give us an idea uh, what, what, what organization you are representing via this Slido poll survey. We have a lot coming from uh, the local government units. It's good. So uh, I believe there are also uh, stakeholders on the users and operators. So their answers might not reflect here because they're also joining us on site. Um, so in case they have answers, uh, our colleagues from Passive Transport can facilitate that or can um, indicate that to us uh, after the session. So it's good that those who are able to join the Slido, perhaps a lot of these are coming from the Zoom uh, meeting, a Zoom call, who are joining us uh, today. Um, so it's a good overview of uh, the composition of this session. Uh, okay, so if there are no more entries. Nash, we can perhaps go to the next one. I have taken a screenshot. Uh, another question, a follow-up question. Uh, which vehicle type are you operating or driving? Anong uri ng sasakyan ang inyong pinatatakbo o minamaneho? Uh, Nag-operate ba kayo ng e-trike? Okay. Non-EV, yung mga nag-conventional, no? So, non-EV ba? Pwede rin ko nari uh, pedicab, then non-EV din yun. Ano pa ba? E-quad. Uh, e-jeepneys, kung meron tayong mga kasama na nag-operate ng e-jeepneys uh, or e-buses. So most likely ito malaki talaga sa e-trike, no? given that uh, a lot of the initiatives have been on the uh, this mode of uh, transport. So, um, okay, ah. Ano pa tayong pumapasa? One more minute. So, yun. Yung mga nag-join lang, uh, just go to slido.com and type the event code. Uh, later on, after the pres first presentation, we'll have uh, one or two two more questions uh, just to also understand yung mga hows and whys. No? So, uh, thank you, Nash. So, that's a good overview. And... So ngayon po, ipapasa ko na rin yung mic kay Anton uh, uh, later. Pero i-introduce ko na lang siguro muna no, para yung kasunod din ni, ni Anton, uh, we will be able to understand like, who are joining us for today. So first, we will hear from Anton C. He's the head of Passive Transport Team. For those who are not familiar, his work involves uh, handling all matters related to transport planning in the city, uh, including road safety and electric mobility, uh, a lot of walking and cycling initiatives that are happening in Pasig City. Pasig City is a city of about 900,000 people in the Philippines, so it's part of the National Capital Region. Also with us later after uh, you hear from Anton is uh, Dr. Manny Biona. He's the Executive Director of EV Association of the Philippines, but he's also the professor, uh, a professor um, and uh, the Executive Dean of Enrique Razon Logistics Institute uh, in the La Salle University. He's also a technology advisor of Tojo Water. So that's a local EV manufacturing company in the Philippines. We're also joined today by colleagues from Tojo Motors on Singapore. Later, I'll have them introduce themselves. So they will be doing the live demo today. So with that, uh, Anton, would you like to walk us through the project now and our, our initiatives uh, in Solutions Plus? Okay, sige po. Um, thanks, Kat. Uh, good uh, afternoon po sa lahat ng attendees natin. Uh, I believe Kat said that uh, this... Um, uh, this presentation, of course, today, this training will be shared with our other colleagues, some of whom are from us. Uh, but today, uh, my assurance naman po tayo from the moderators na may translation naman po tayo 
So I think for the ease of yung mga kasama natin na kapakawin kapaka- din na galing sa uh, mga government units in the Philippines, uh, I think I was advised na gawin po natin uh, medyo taglish yung presentation natin. So uh, I guess maybe I'll go into uh, the introduction to the Solutions Plus project. So I'm actually very excited to share this with everybody because this represents a uh, step forward for uh, the collaboration of Solutions Plus with Pasig City. So for the background of everybody, the Solutions Plus project is a uh, project uh, that has been uh, supporting Pasig City and uh, developing e-mobility, uh, electric mobility in Pasig City. Uh, among our partners for this project are not just Clean Air Asia, but of course the European Union, which is a uh, funder for the project. Um, uh, very thankful, of course, for the support and the UN uh, Environment Program, uh, among uh, other um, many different partners for the project. So I guess maybe to um, next slide, please. Siguro for ano, um, to start off, we can uh, talk about the main urban challenges of Pasig. Uh, na, uh, I, th- I believe these are shared also with some of the other uh, LGUs in Metro Manila. So for Pasig City, we have a number of uh, uh, challenges related to urban transportation. I think, uh, I mean, in, po natin in the Philippines, uh, many uh, of our LGUs suffer, suffer from this. And uh, it's not like we're... Uh, we can really blame uh, any places that the service quality of public transport has been, uh, I think, inadequate for a uh, quite some time in the Philippines. And I think uh, as we move towards uh, modernization of the public transport system, uh, this is a reality that we have to gra- we have to grapple with when we're trying to remedy the transportation situation. We also have, um, I think, as a response to this, a uh, very high growth rate of motorization. So uh, many people. Uh, purchasing motor vehicles as a response to inadequate transportation service, especially motorized two-wheelers. And I think this is um, something which is a uh, problem for uh, Philippine LGUs, especially since uh, ngayon, um, the po yung climate change. Uh, now it's uh, COP26, um, the big climate change conference in Glasgow. And I think one of the realities that we have to deal with here is that uh, sa lahat po ng uh, ibang sector ng carbon emissions, tulad ng, uh, ng manufacturing, uh, electricity generation, uh, yung transport po yung isang sector ng carbon emissions na uh, patuloy yung pagtaas ng uh, carbonization. So it's not a very um, good trend and I think it's something that we have to uh, be able to reverse as we um, consider our policy. So besides urban passenger transport, um, we ser- we also have issues for urban urban cargo and goods movement. So um, because of the pandemic, we've seen a increase in e-commerce and delivery. That means uh, for uh, people are turning towards delivery orders for their um, uh, to meet their daily needs, which actually increases some um, carbonization because of the increased transport costs of many goods. And because of that, um, urban goods movements actually are heavily reliant on many uh, traditional internal combustion engine vehicles, such as uh, conventional trucks, as well as uh, motorcycles. So actually, uh, I think we've seen an increase in two-wheel traffic um, related to doing uh, small-scale deliveries of goods for e-commerce, which uh, I, I believe this one trend that has been contributing to increased carbonization of the transport sector in uh, the urban Philippines. Next slide, please. So, yun, uh, I guess to show everybody a uh, first project only around the world that are essential for electric mobility. Next slide, please. So, part of the uh, initial... Uh, part of the initial... Solution, but we um, try to do innovative uh, business models, vehicles, uh, services, policies, and operation that uh, help all kinds of electric vehicles. So uh, as we said earlier, what we also want to show sa Solutions Plus project is that an e-mobility solution na hindi lang po siya uh, dekahon na parang ililift lang natin sa Europe tasi ilalagay natin dito sa Philippines na wala tayong sense sa context. But we also want to develop solutions that are uh, an appropriate po sa Philippine context to make sure that it really responds to our local needs. Uh, of course, many of our local needs in the Philippines involve different things. You need to be able to respond to the uh, demands for um, for Philippine use of electric vehicles, including, uh, for instance, yung uh, e-commerce, which I mentioned. You need to have vehicles na adapted po sa streets ng Philippines, which are usually narrow and smaller. Uh, so you need a vehicle of the appropriate size. And you need a vehicle that's also resistant to the environmental conditions in the Philippines, where it's uh, uh, quite hot and humid and uh, uh, also vulnerable to many uh, types of of uh, uh, storms, for instance, and other climate uh, ch- climate change induced 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 uh, conditions and weather. And we also want to show through 
the rec replication of uh, the innovations we make here in Pasig City. Uh, hopefully, we can uh, upscale them and uh, replicate them uh, in other cities in the Philippines, but also for other cities around the world that share a similar context to us. Yun. So uh, again, with our demonstration objectives, we want to increase the availability of the quality and mobility solutions. Uh, we want to be able to show solutions that can uh, support uh, local industries by being replicable using uh, local industries and local, uh, locally available manufacturing technology uh, and, skills, and skills in labor. We want to show that there's a business model that we can make viable in Pasig that can be replicated uh, again in cities that are similarly uh, economically situated and have similar regulatory frameworks. And we also want to show uh, other cities in the Philippines and other government institutions that there are uh, good models that we can use from this living lab to update and uh, create a supportive environment for electric mobility frameworks. Okay, so actually this is where uh, I'm very excited to share um, one of the demonstration vehicles that we are working on with uh, the help of uh, Tojo Motors and uh, the Solutions Plus project. We're um, looking to develop uh, what we call an e-cargo -quad e quadricycle and uh, light electric vehicle. So this is uh, uh, one of the uh, one of the prototype vehicles that we're trying to develop focused on urban freight. Para uh, imbis ng delivery trucks or motorcycle yung gagamitin that uh, use um, fuel and create emissions and pollution, we're looking at developing an electric vehicle for many of these uh, business uses and urban freight purposes uh, to make sure uh, that we can uh, transition our transport sector towards uh, cleaner modes of transportation. And again, um, we want to show that um, this can be used for postal services, again, uh, built off of uh, partnership field post passing uh, through the Solutions Plus project. Uh, we want to show that it, uh, we can use it for city operations. So uh, to go a little more on the um, features of the e-quad cycle that we to develop. Uh, so this uses a uh, electric uh, vehicle drivetrain developed by um, Valeo, um, by Valeo, who's one of our partner companies in the um, Solutions Plus project. It'll be using an interchangeable modular platform that we can uh, change for multiple applications. So actually, we can use this for freight, but uh, the platform might even be usable for uh, certain uh, light passenger uses uh, with a capacity of 200, uh, 270 uh, kilograms. So again, uh, this is something we're looking at for uh, that can be used for a variety of urban transport purposes. And uh, we will also make sure the vehicles are fitted with um, systems that can show us uh, real-time monitoring of the operational status of the vehicle that will support things like uh, smart charging, that will uh, have uh, monitoring and smart systems to make sure that uh, we, we have a better uh, monitoring of the vehicle's maintenance status, but will also help us enable things like mobility as a service. Yun. So, so in addition to partnership with our national partner, um, we're also engaged in a local startup with Tojo Motors, uh, a developer, uh, a uh, local manufacturer of electric vehicles that will help us uh, design and prototype the vehicle and also uh, provide the uh, basic uh, uh, design know-how and technical input that will let us uh, produce the vehicle and eventually uh, produce a model that will help us uh, upscale for, uh, for to replicate the project in other areas. And again, we're working with the uh, different local stakeholders to make sure that we have a user-centric uh, system design. So yung labas, yung labas po ito is not just a vehicle, but an entire uh, fleet management and operating system that will help us uh, transition uh, different types of fleets towards uh, using ele electric vehicles. So hindi po siya magiging parang one-off uh, demonstration unit lang, but we want to make sure that we can show not just a, not just a viable vehicle, but also a viable system and business model that can really help us transition towards cleaner mobility. Again, um, we're, uh, we're working here in cooperation with the DOST, with the Flexible Electric Van Project, uh, with the um, Philippine Department of Science and Technology. And uh, this will actually also be another type of vehicle, uh, similar in application, complement to the uh, e-quadricycle, uh, hopefully uh, helping us develop another type of sustainable uh, urban electric vehicle that can also help replace internal combustion vehicles. Okay, so uh, in the PASIG demo, uh, directly involved are uh, the PASIG Transport Office and the General Services Office, but we also have uh, many different partners, including uh, Tojo Motors, De La Salle University, uh, Philpost, uh, and PASIG C Local E-Mobility Steering Committee, uh, appointed by the Mayor's Office that will help us uh, do the policy for electric mobility in PASIG City. Uh, we've also partnered up with uh, different um, small and medium businesses, uh, homeowners groups, 
uh, logistic providers, local transport operators. Uh, of course, Meralco as the um, uh, main electric electric distribution company in, uh, uh, in Metro Manila, and also in cooperation with the, with different national government agencies. So uh, as you see, uh, in order to make this happen, we're consulting with many different stakeholders, uh, really to make sure that we cover all the angles needed uh, to make our electric vehicle framework as comprehensive as possible. Uh, in addition, um, like I mentioned, um, this isn't about developing, developing the vehicle. So we do have a uh, demonstration action in terms of developing the prototype vehicle, but we're also looking towards uh, making sure that the vehicle can not just be uh, operated. We want to make sure that the vehicle operations can really be integrated uh, in existing uh, city and private sector operations to make sure that we really have a replicable model that we can take towards, uh, uh, that we can really upscale and turn into a viable solution for replacing and decarbonizing transportation. Uh, that's basically it. Um, it's been a um, very exciting uh, process for Pasig City so far, and we're very happy to uh, be sharing this with our other uh, LGU national government and uh, other partners that are uh, attending this training today. And of course, if you have any questions, uh, we can be reached on social media and through our email accounts. So Yun, uh, thank you very much, Kat, and uh, it's very nice to introduce this to everybody. Thank you, Anton. Uh, so there are a lot of exciting activities ongoing. Um, dami nangyayari no, in, in Pasig City, a lot of things to look forward to. Uh, as Anton said, we are testing a lot of solutions, but we're ensure, ensuring that they are fitting to the local context. Uh, we, are, we have been testing, uh, we have been through the project, been working with uh, the EU partners, but also with other regions, uh, other continents, other cities to support also the building of capacity. So we will ensure uh, that uh, you know, during this process, consulted the local teams. And you may have also caught uh, Anton uh, say earlier, but I'm also happy to reiterate that with Pasig Transport's uh, leadership, they have also set up internally within the local government unit, the steering committee on e-mobility. So he has presented a bit uh, about that earlier during the stakeholder uh, uh, table. Uh, he had also mentioned a bit about the continued consultation. So we will continue to do that uh, with their team, uh, focus group discussions uh, with the potential users, existing users. Uh, how are the uh, users responding to the design? Are there questions that we are missing based on the, the ATRAC users experience? So we have been engaging uh, for the last uh, year uh, with different entities, um, not only within the LGU, but we have also been engaging with the other e-mobility project partners in the Philippines. So some of them are also joining us today. So with that, um, thank you, Anton. Uh, we have a few more surveys to understand uh, our uh, level of understanding then uh, of uh, the users. So Anash, could you kindly try to uh, share the two Slido surveys? So we have two more questions, uh, two or three. Yeah, I think uh, two more questions uh, to understand this. Uh, do you prefer internal combustion engine vehicles over EVs? Mas gusto mo ba ang, ang conventional na sasakyan kaysa sa mga EVs? So we want to, we want to understand baka may iba rin, na, uh, iba rin yung insights on this. No? So uh, the next question is actually on the why. So no, at any status. So let's proceed to the next question. Why? So this is an open question. Uh, just give us a, a, an idea of why uh, the preference. Bakit mas gusto nyo ang EVs? O bakit ayaw nyo ng conventional EV? Especially kung, may, kung nakapag-manage na kayo ng fleets uh, or within your LGU you've had experience, meron ba kayong uh, insights bakit mas gusto nyo mag-transition na sa EVs? No, I think maganda rin yun matingnan. No? Kasi we saw earlier that there are a lot of people coming from the private sector and, and I think local government unit. Uh, whether you're presenting, representing Pasig or you're representing another city in the Philippines, uh, why do you want to transition to EV? Why do you not like uh, the conventional uh, vehicles? I think that would be a good insight to know. Just less pollution. Yes, indeed, um, that is one of the, the things that we will also tackle uh, this week, the charging infrastructure and what are the fitting uh, charging infrastructure for the city you know, based on their use. So perhaps for those who are really using the EVs for, for utility, perhaps the charging time taking so long is a, um, uh, 
uh, deterrent for transitioning. So that is also one of the reasons why a lot of consultations are surrounding what are your current operations? How are you currently using your conventional EVs? Because it's also good to understand if we're going to support the cities in this transition, are we going to put up a slow charging, a fast charging, an overnight charging rather, uh, or what type of charging is suitable for the city specific to the, the uses that we foresee. So we'll talk about that on Thursday. So join us on Thursday for the specific uh, discussion on charging. And I think also on Friday, we will talk about that. Good question. Ilang oras ba ang charge yan? So in the next few days, we will talk about the charging. No? So uh, I think that would be on Thursday and Friday. We will talk uh, on Thursday. That would be about the charging, the, the standards, the recap of what the past deployments have been in the Philippines, uh, the challenges. No? And, but on Friday, we'll also talk about that. So we're not able to determine who sent the answers, I believe, based on the surveys. But... Um, yeah, we hope that you could join us this week. So uh, we have five uh, answers here. And so we will touch on the charging, uh, as I mentioned, and we will close the poll so that we can continue with the discussions. Okay, good. So with that, uh, I would like to uh, give the floor to Dr. Manny Biana, who will give us a, a, a presentation on the EV, EV parts. Uh, and other technical considerations and aspects of the EV uh, before we proceed to the live demo. So, Dr. Mani, the floor is yours. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so, I'll just be giving a brief, very brief, brief overview of electric vehicles, uh, like some sort of an EV basic. And then after that, I'm going to turn you over to Santa Rosa Laguna, uh, to Paul okay, of, of Tojo Motors, where in, uh, he will be the one to do the demos. He will be the one to discuss the... Uh, uh, safety uh, considerations when you use electric vehicles, like uh, you're going to show you uh, <clears throat> nasan ba yung mga iba-ibang parts na i-discuss natin okay, dito sa presentation na to. And then the, what are the basic uh, maintenance uh, work na kailangan. Yeah. So, um, but from my end, I'll just be providing a very brief uh, overview ng electric vehicles. So by the way, good afternoon uh, to, to everyone. So I'll be discussing about uh, some local electric updates. So like, ano na ba yung mga available na mga models right now sa market? So marami rin kasi nagtatanong nun. And then second, uh, let's try to define electric vehicles. Ano ba yung electric vehicles? Ano yung hindi electric vehicles? Kasi marami rin katanungan kung hybrids pa, for example, electric vehicles ba yung mga yan? And also, ano ba yung mga basic parts ng isang electric vehicle? And uh, I'm going to show you a typical uh, specification of an electric vehicle and then try natin intindihin ano bang ibig sabihin ng mga yun. Kasi syempre, at some point, you might have to buy an electric vehicle and the important thing na intindihan nyo siguro kung ano yung mga specifications, ibig sabihin ng mga specifications na yun para makapili kayo ng mabuti. Okay, and then also uh, some overview of the basic overview of uh, the char charging basics. Like ano, ano ba yung mga iba-ibang klaseng uh, charging protocols, saan ginagamit siya mga yan. Okay. Uh, so just some local updates. So this is the 2019 data. Uh, there's, there's, there are more updated uh, data right now. Pero medyo unreliable kasi alam naman natin na nagka-pandemic tayo. In fact, bumaba siya, pero it doesn't mean na kumonte. Kasi chances are, hindi lang nag-register. Nag because what we have here what I'm showing you here, these are the official vehicle registrations. And it's possible that some of the vehicles are not registered in the So especially in 2020 and 2021. So if we're, if we're going to look at these figures, uh, we have around 12,000 electric vehicles in 2019. Um, it could be a little bit more right now, but in a piece of records, it could be smaller uh, because it's uh, not registered. So, um, bulk of that uh, twelve thousand electric vehicles uh, are the uh, are they mostly consist of the e trikes, so yung mga electric trikes. And bakit ubangat yan? Kasi uh, ito yung mga electric trikes ng DOE. If you would recall, um, nagdonate yung mga DOE na mga electric trikes sa mga 
sa mga LGUs. Yeah, so, kaya medyo mataas yung electric trikes na yan. Sila yung nagdo-dominate. And then, of course, maraming mga electric motorcycles. Okay, but of course, what we have here, uh, ito lang yung mga nag But we know na maraming mga electric two-wheelers, not necessarily motorcycles, uh, yung nagdilipa na right now na hindi naman nag registro kasi iba sa kanila, sobrang liit para i-registro. So, marami tayo nakikita nun. I think you're very familiar with, with those. No? Malamang kung lalabas kayo ngayon dyan sa, sa City Hall, may, makakita agad kayong tumatakbo ng electric two-wheeler. Okay. Um, and then, um, also, medyo considerable din yung dami ng electric uh, utility vehicles. Ito yung mga jeepneys. And surprisingly, actually, medyo madami-dabi na rin yung mga electric cars. Um, meron ako nakikita mga Tesla so import ng Tesla pero marami na rin mga car companies right now locally na nag-o-offer locally ng, uh, ng electric vehicles I'm going to show you some of the models later okay. Uh, okay. so itong next slide natin ito yung mga electric GP models na available right now yung Vietz this, this is an air-conditioned model um but it's mostly packaged right now as an electric shuttle. So para siyang, uh, para siyang mini bus na shuttle. No? So ginagamit siya karamihan right now sa pagatid at sa pagsundo ng mga empleyado. <clears throat> uh, itong unit na to, med medyo malaki to. 30 yung passengers niya. And uh, medyo malaki yung battery niya. Naka-air condition siya. Kaya medyo mahal siya for an electric uh, jeepney. But it's a very nice, it's a very nice vehicle. So it's mostly used right now for shuttles. Hopefully soon, uh, we, can, we can see them being used as electric jeepneys. So yung the guider, which is a partnership with uh, with Sarau, um, this I think this is still still in the proto. I mean, this is just still in the prototyping phase. I haven't seen a year, an actual unit running. Um, but we hope also that soon this will be introduced in the market. So you start it, and then your Matocho Motors units are medyo madami yan. Okay. Yan yung nag-dominate right now. Those are two models dominating the electric chip market. And then yung e-trex, yung sa, sa Department of Energy, uh, gawa ng BMAC yun. But in addition to those, uh, meron din yung Ilaya. Yung Ilaya, madami to sa Antipolo. Then EV Wells, nagsimula ito sa, sa Mandaluyong. Uh, but right now, uh, marami sa kanilang umiikot sa, sa Quezon City, I think. Daily Guider, okay, also they're planning to roll out their units. Sun e trike this is mostly, I think, in uh, if I'm not mistaken, Batangas or, or Laguna. You start eight. Um, you see them also in... in it's mostly in the provinces. In Tojo Motors, uh, you can see them in Naga, you can see them in, in uh, Boracay, in Jensan, um, Butuan. So mostly, namang, most of the rollouts is mga nasa, nasa probinsya. Now, bakit mostly nasa probinsya? So, um, May mga rollouts dito sa Metro Manila, pero yun nga, karamihan doon sa DOE e-trikes, which are, which are donations, subsidized siya. The one in Antipolo, yeah, it's not subsidized, okay, but these are um, these are smaller units, so competitive naman sila doon. Uh, pero yung mga e-trikes, mostly mga nasa probinsya, kasi sa probinsya malalayo yung takbo. And that's where you get a lot of savings kasi. So, alam naman natin na yung mga electric vehicles, yung savings na nakadepende sa layo ng takbo. So, kung, kung regularly tumatakbo ka na malayo, palaki yung gusto mo ng gasolina. So, pag nagpalit ka ng electrics, mas madali mo mababawi. Kaya, karamihan ng mga electric vehicles, electric tricycles, makikita natin right now sa probinsya. So, kung tumatakbo ka lang ng mga 50 kilometers in a day, 40 kilometers in a day, baka kung, then kung malaki yung unit mo, medyo mahal. May medyo alakanin yung economics but once you're looking you're, 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 you're like reaching around 70 80 uh, 90 kilometers a day which is very common in provinces kasi ito yung mga tumatakbo sa highway then 
you get a lot of viabilities. Kaya karamihan ng market right now ng mga electric bicycles is mga, mga probinsya. Unless they are, they are subsidized. <clears throat> uh, uh, as I said, uh, ito yung mga electric vehicles right now, electric cars na available sa market, mabibili mo na. In fact, it's, it's, it's more than this listing. No? So merong Hyundai, merong Nissan, a BYD, Eh, yung Hyundai, meron siyang crossover, which is Hyundai Kona. I think familiar kayo sa, sa, sa Kona. No? May Jaguar, may Cherry. In fact, um, meron na rin, ano, meron na rin um, Range Rover na, na electric na binibenta rito locally right now. So, dumadami na sila. And of course, some of, some of the users, they import directly from, from abroad. So, meron ako nangita, marami na ako nangita mga Tesla. So, those, 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 those were imported directly from, from abroad. So these are examples naman ng plug-in hybrids. Okay, so plug-in hybrids kasi are also considered as electric vehicles. I'm going to discuss more about that later. So, so Hyundai Ionic. So yung Hyundai, meron siyang dalawang version. No? Ionic, tsaka um, uh, plug-in, tsaka plug-in, tsaka for electric. Then may Volvo, BYD, a Range Rover. Okay, um, um, so there are several BYD models. So yung unang, yung BYD tang is an tang is an SUV. Yung BYD kid is a uh, is a uh, is a car sedan, and then you have the Mitsubishi Outlander, which is an SUV. Okay. So dumadami na sila. Now, uh, pag sinabi pa natin electric vehicles, ano bang ibig sabihin nun? Maramit na narinig kasi hybrid electric vehicle, plug-in electric vehicle, battery electric vehicle. Ano ba yung kasama dyan? Okay. Um, eh before, it common na sinasama yung hybrid electric vehicle. But right now, um, normally, ang kinakover lang ng definition na yan is yung like in hybrid and battery electric. Ano ba ang pagkakaiba nila? Okay. Uh, I want to start first with the battery electric vehicle. So sa battery electric vehicle, may plug ka, ipa-plug mo yung battery mo mula sa outlet, ito charge mo siya. So, magkakaroon ng kuryente yung battery mo. After that, patatakboyin ng battery mo yung electric motor and tatakboy yung sasakyan. Pagka isan, fitted siya ng electric brake and general generator brake. Panagbibrake ka. So, yung panagbibrake ka, ang nangyayari, ina-absorb nung, nung motor mo, pabalik yung kuryente and siya charge po yung battery mo. So, kung meron ka emergency braking, mas nakakatipid ka. Every time na nagbe-brake ka, sa, sa, it's a normal na sasakyan. Every time, every time na nagbe-brake ka, that is actually energy lost. But for an electric vehicle, every time you brake, part of that energy goes back to your, to your battery. So in the long run, you, you save. You save energy. Next, we have what we call plug-in hybrids. So how does it work? Okay. Pag yung battery electric, tinagdagan natin ng gasoline or diesel engine. <clears throat> then, um, you don't have what we call a plug-in hybrid. So how does it work? So may mga cases where in, okay, gagamitin mo yung, yung electric motor mo, pero kung naubos na ka na ng kuryente and naalangan ka, pwede ka mag-shift sa, sa engine. So that's the main advantage of the plug-in hybrids. But of course, it's not as clean as a battery electric vehicle. Very common to pag nagsisimula pa lang yung electric vehicle adoption kung saan hindi pa ganun kadami yung mga charging points. No? So karamihan ng tao binibili plug-in hybrids. Also, uh, pag nag-plug-in hybrid ka, ano yung advantage niya? So kung titignan natin yung drawing, mas malaki yung kulay orange doon sa battery electric. Kasi pag nag-plug-in hybrid ka, pwedeng maliit lang yung battery mo. Yung battery kasi is a major, uh, uh, it, it, it accounts for a major part of the cost of the vehicle. So kung mapapaliit mo yung battery mo, kasi meron ka namang, pwede ka namang mag-shift doon sa gasoline engine if ever maubusan ka, then you're able to bring down the cost of the vehicle. Sa plug-in hybrids, normally, mas mura yan kaysa battery electric vehicles. And uh, normally, maliit lang yung battery nito. Like for example, just enough for you to run 60 kilometers per charge or 70 kilometers per charge. But does it make sense? So yun yung question. No? But if you look at 
on a daily basis, gaano kalayo ba yung tinatakbo ng sasakyan ninyo? Papasok ka lang sa trabaho and then babalik ka sa bahay. Malaki na yung 20-30 kilometers. So in fact, that should be more than enough for you already to get to run your vehicle using pure electric every day under normal conditions. And siguro kung maglo-long drive ka sa weekend, it's only time that you shift to, to gasoline or diesel. So in some cases, kahit na naka-plug-in hybrids ka, para ka na rin naka-full electric. Kasi pang emergency mo lang naman yung gasoline and diesel. And for daily use, okay, naka-pure naka naka -pure battery ka. Okay. And mas mura siya. And um, in, in, in some cases, um, may, may mga cases, especially sa Europe, for example, in Amsterdam, in, meron silang mga buses na naka-plug in hybrid. So uh, ano naman yung konsepto noon? Sa Amsterdam, meron silang mga tinatawag na green zones. So you can imagine green zones as parang siguro city center. So kung tumatakbo yung bus sa highway, tumatakbo siya using the diesel engine. Of course, in terms of greenhouse gases, you're producing greenhouse gases. Pero mas konti yung exposed na tao doon sa emissions. Kasi nasa highway ka naman, malayo yung tao. But once the vehicle starts to enter the city center, kiri-required yung mga sasakyan, itong mga plug-in hybrids na to, na mag-shift sa full battery electric operation. So parang pagka na city center, okay, full electric, parang na na siya full electric. Uh, na, nabibigay niya yung health benefits ng, 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 ng full, full electric. And mas, and mas mura siya. Okay. So it really depends kung ano yung mga rating ng battery mo, ano yung gano'ng kalayo yung tinatak mo. If to assess kung... Okay, it's better to go for battery electric or, or plug-in plug -in hybrids. Now, uh, there is a third type, okay, which used to be part of the definition of electric vehicles. Uh, these are called hybrid electric vehicles. So how does this work? So ang pagkakaiba nitong hybrid electric vehicle at plug-in hybrid, nakikita na sa drawing, wala kang plug. No? So dito, Ganun din, pwede ka tumakbo using your, your motor using, or you're using your engine. Pero this time, ang nagta-charge ng battery mo is yung gasoline engine mo rin. Mayroon lang siyang generator. No? So kung nakakopol yung engine mo sa isang generator or nakakopol siya sa, sa motor ng sasakyan, which, serves also, which could also serve as a generator, nagta-charge na yung, yung, yung battery. Now, siguro magtatanong, uh, may, may question siguro na, ano pa silbi nun? Eh, pa, eh di ba di mo nalang itakbo diretso using, using the, the engine? Okay. So ang pinaka-advantage ng um, hybrid electric is yung engine, iba-iba yung efficiency niya. Depende kung paano siya nag-ooperate. Normally at very slow RPM and low loads, mababa yung efficiency niya. Malakas siya kung sumusumo. And then, kung biglang at higher loads, may mga points na mataas yung kanyang efficiency. So, pero kung gagamitin mo yung engine na yun to run at constant speed just to charge your vehicle and run it at the point kung saan mataas yung efficiency niya. So, you're able to charge your battery using the high efficiency operation ng engine. And yung magbabari-bari ng speed will now be your motor is no longer your, your engine. So in the long run, if you add things up, okay, hybrid electric vehicles, depending on the drive cycle, lalo na kung matrafik to, malaki yung kanyang contribution, malaki yung reduction sa emissions sa fuel consumption. So depending on the drive cycle, then you, 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 your uh, hybrid electric vehicles are more efficient than the ordinary internal combustion engine vehicles. But again, it depends on the drive cycle. Kung wala ka naka-highway, baka, baka mas efficient pa actually yung, yung ordinary, ordinary internal combustion engine. But if you're in a city where in yung drive cycle is stop, go, stop, go, mag traffic, okay, a hybrid electric vehicle could provide you with a lot of savings, fuel savings. Okay. So this time, pag sinabi natin electric vehicles, 
we're only referring to plug-in hybrid electric vehicles and battery electric vehicles. These are vehicles that are directly charged to the electrical supply. Okay. <clears throat> so yung hybrid electric vehicles, it's basically just a, a conventional vehicle kasi lahat ng power niya nanggagaling sa gasolina. Okay. Now, um, so what are the basic parts of an electric vehicle? Siguro before I go into this, yung tanong ngayon is, uh, bakit marami na tayo nakikita ngayon ng mga locally made electric vehicles? Mar bakit marami gumagawa ng local na mga sasakyan using the electric vehicle drive train? Well, makikita naman siguro natin sa picture na ang isang conventional vehicle, napakarami parts niyan. And then if you compare that to the electric vehicle, konti lang. In fact, apat na yung pinaka-main major parts niya. So, in fact, sabi nga nila, yung isang internal combustion vehicle or conventional vehicle have around 2,000 plus moving parts. While electric vehicle just have around um, a 40, 20 to 40 moving, moving parts. So, napakasimple yung gumawa ng isang electric vehicle. So, yung basic. But of course, you have to put in a lot of features. You have to ensure that it becomes very efficient. Um, it, it is smart, so that's where things becomes now uh, a bit more complicated. You want to ensure na maganda yung balance and everything. Okay. So, but anyway, let's all try to look at what are the basic vehicle drive components. Ano ba yung mga basic components ng electric vehicles? Number one, uh, meron kang charger. Okay. I think yung sa inyo, ano mga nag operate ng electric vehicle, siya charge yung sasakyan nyo. So, meron kang charger. Yung charger niya yan, pwedeng on-board. Big sabihin, nandun siya sa saksya. Pag may nakita kang plug, ipa-plug mo lang siya. Or, it could be stationary. Wala yung charger mo dun sa sakyan. Okay. Next, uh, electric vehicles contains batteries. Kasi syempre kung wala yan, saan niya isustore yung, yung energy, no? yung electricity, yung kuryente. And then, meron ka controller na nagko-control sa bilis ng ikot ng motor siya nagko-control ng gaano karaming kuryenteng papasok doon sa motor. And then you have the motor, yung, yung pinaka-traction motor nung, nung uh, sasakyan. Okay, so makikita natin dito yung itsura ng mga um, major components. No? So itong part na to, this is your electric motor. Okay, that's your controller. Okay, this is your battery. Normally, nakapack yung battery mo. Okay, this is yung itsura niya for an electric drive. Of course, ibang-ibang itsura niya pagdating ng, pagdating ng mga electric cars. Okay, medyo complicated yung itsura niya. But the function uh, remains the same. In fact, yung mga advanced electric cars, okay, in fact, the one, the one that we're rolling out in passing, wala na siyang controller na hiwalay. Yung controller niya naka-integrate na doon sa motor and then yung sasakyan, meron siyang VCU, vehicle control unit. So parang kung nagdo-drive kayo ng conventional car, parang ECU. So parang may ganun siya nagkakaroon siya ng parang ECU na yun na rin ang control ng, ng motor. Okay. Now, uh, kung bibili ka ng sakyan, electric vehicle, may titira ka mga specifications. So, paano, ano bang ibig sabihin ng mga specifications? Ito? Look, very common na makikita mo ano yung battery type. So, uh, yung, pinaka, yung normal na ginagamit right now, dalawa, lead acid, which is your common car battery. Parang ganun siya, no? Or lithium phosphate batteries. So lithium iron, phos uh, uh, lith lithium iron phosphate batteries. So ito yung mga life PO4. So ibig sabihin niya, lithium iron phosphate batteries. Yan. Misan mabasa niya, the ion that also means lithium iron phosphate or LFP. Pag sinabi natin lithium battery, maraming klase. And then yung lithium iron phosphate is just one type of a lithium battery. Now, uh, right now, yan yung pinaka-common. Kasi uh, mura siya. And gumaganda naman, naman yung performance. Na merong tinatawag na lithium polymer. So yung lithium polymer, actually, magandang klase siya. Mataas yung kaya niya i-charge. Mabilis, pwede siya mabilis, mas mabilis i-charge. Pero ang problema niya is, maikli lang yung life nito, maikli lang yung buhay nito. So, siguro sa inyo yung mga nag-ooperate ng, ng electric vehicle, no? 
may may time na, na naranasan niyo umiihi na yung battery kailangan mo palitan. So this yung polymer medyo maikli lang yung buhay nito. Okay. And then merong right now na lumalabas, this yung titanium oxide. Um ito yung mga common na ginagamit right now sa mga advanced electric vehicles. Sila nung lithium polymer titanium oxide. Bakit? Mabilis kasi pwede kasi mabilis i-charge to. So hindi siya umiinit. So kaya niyang 10 minutes, tapos ka na. Para ka lang bumisita sa gasoline station, nagpag-gasolina. So mataas yung kanyang mga charge rates. Okay. Then of course, you have the lead acid. So yung pinaka-common right now is the lithium phosphate and yung lead acid. Okay. Uh, driving range, ibig sabihin niyan, sa isang charge, pag nag-full charge, kagano karami kaya mong takbuhin. So, ang binigay ko after an example dito, this is a typical para, uh, specification of an electric tricycle. So, for e-trikes, okay, normally 30 to 60 kilometers. Yung range siya na makikita ninyo. E-jeeps around 30 to 60 kilometers. E-cars, 200 to 400 kilometers. So, it's now common to um, encounter electric vehicles that are able to run 400 kilometers between charge. So, so imagine din natin, no? Um, kung tumatakbo ka lang ng mga 20 o 30 kilometers a day, ilang araw ka bago mag-charge ulit? Of course, ayaw mo naman bumaba talaga yung charge yan. Um, pero kung hypothetical lang, 400 divided by, sabi natin 20, that's what? 400 times 20, that is, that's 20 days. So, kung sasagarin mo talaga, pwedeng in 20 days, di ka mag-charge. Kung araw-araw, 20 kilometers lang naman tinatakbo. Anong implication nun? So, next sa question ko, kung kayang gawin ang sasakyan mo yan, in 20 kilometers na naman tinatakbo mo in a day, issue ba sa iyo yung charging point? Okay. Eh, pwede ka naman mag-charge sa gabi. So, pagka maubos na, tsaka mo i-charge sa gabi yung, yung battery mo. So, this only indicates na, in fact, pwede ka magkaroon ng isang electric vehicle um, Um, economy na kahit wala kang public charging point. Okay, kung pinag-uusapan natin, ganito kaahaba yung mga, yung mga uh, kilometers na kaya yung range ng, ng sasakyan mo. And it's not common. Okay. So pwedeng purely at night ka lang sa bahay mo mag-charge ng sasakyan mo. Electric buses okay, is also common to see around 200 to 400 kilometers between charge. Now, yung battery size yung battery size, rated yan in terms of kilowatt hour. Mas malaki yung number, mas malaki yung kayang i-store mo na oriente sa battery mo, mas mahaba yung pwede mong takbuhin. For e-trikes, common yung 2 to 6 kilowatt hour. Normally, ang electric trike, kung maayos yung pagkakadesign, umaabot na mga around 15 kilometers per kilowatt hour yan. So kung mayroon kang let's say 4 kilowatts yung battery mo, so that would be what? 15 times 4. 4 kilowatt hour. So 15 times 4, 60 kilometers yun. But of course, hindi mo sasagarin niya. Meron kang tinatawag na depth of discharge. Pag sinabing depth of discharge, 80%. Ibig sabihin, 80% lang ng laman niya yung pwede mong gamitin. Kasi siguro sa inyo, mga nakakapag-operate ng electric bike or electric vehicles, pag mababa na yung battery charge mo, medyo mahirap na kontrolin yung sasakyan, di ba? So, yun. Uh, so, meron ka tinatawag the depth of discharge. So, kung meron ka 80% of the discharge, so that will just be 80% of 60 kilometers. Yung Egypt, common yung 15 to 54 kilowatt hour. Normally, ang mga Egypt, nag-consume yan ng 3 to 5 kilometers per kilowatt hour. Ah, nag- uh, pwede ka tumakbo ng around 15 to 5 kilometers per kilowatt hour. So kung meron kang 15 kilowatt hour and as uh, 5 kilometers na kayang takbuhin ng bawat uh, ng, uh, ng bawat kilowatt hour, so gano'ng karami yung range ng jeep mo? So 15 times, 15 times 5. Okay. Of course, you just get around 80% of that depends sa depth of discharge mo. Or kung 3 kilometers per kilowatt hour naman, let's say, 
medyo mabigat yung pagkaka-design mo ng Egypt mo, hindi maganda yung mga connections mo, medyo mababa yung energy consumption, yung malakas yung energy consumption mo. So that will just be around 45 kilometers then get 80% of that. Okay. So um, for e-cars, normally is around 40 to 100 kilowatt hour. It's common for electric cars okay, to provide you 5 to 8 kilometers per kilowatt hour. So kung mayroon kang 40 kilowatt hour and 8 kilometers yung 8 kilometers per kilowatt hour yan. So gano'ng karami kayong takuin? 40 times 8 times the of discharge which could be let's say 0.8. Okay. So medyo mahaba-haba na rin yan. Electric bus naman is 300 to 600 kilowatt hour. Now, ano yung normal na konsumo ng electric bus? It's common for electric buses, okay, yung 12 12, uh, 12 meter buses, electric buses, to have a consumption of uh, around uh, 0.7 to 0.8 kilometers per kilowatt hour. So kung 0.7 yan, assume tayo 0.7 kilometers per kilowatt hour, 300 kilowatt hour, 0.7 times 300, and then multiply that by 0.8, which is yun lang yung pwede mong gamitin. That becomes the, the range of your electric bus. Um, kung titinan ka sa, sa isang electric vehicle specifications, minsan may nakalagay dyan, slow charging or fast charging. May mga sasakyan na ang kaya lang slow charging. May mga sasakyan na kaya niya boost mag slow charge and fast charge. Okay. Anong magdidikta ng bilis ng kaya mong i-charge? Okay. Number one, yung size ng battery mo. And then pangalawa, yung type ng battery mo. So yung mga lithium titanate oxides, kaya niyang mabilis na i-charge. Okay. Kaya siya mahal. So, for slow charging rates okay, for electric bicycles, common yung 1.5 kilowatts. So yung mga charger ninyo, maybe you can check okay, in, in, in your e-trikes, uh, around 1, 1. 1.5 kilowatts, 1, 1, 1 to 1. 1.5 kilowatts yung slow charging rate na. And then yung fast charging rate na is around 3 kilowatts. Okay. So, um, but I think mas magandang tignan siguro para mas maintindihan natin kung ano yung nagdidiktan niya kung ilang kilowatts yung kaya mo charge niya. Okay. Um, ang magdidiktan ng bilis ng pagta-charge is yung cell, yung battery cell. Okay. So, familiar kayo sa batteries sa bahay. So, yung bawat isang bilog na yun, that is a cell. Uh, posible may ganyan din yung electric track no? or minsan medyo kwadrado yung itsura. No? Okay. Ang tawag natin doon prismatic. So, pwede yung bilog, cylindrical pwede siyang prismatic. Okay, but very common sa mga local EVs natin, prismatic. Okay, kasi mas madaling i-assemble yan. Okay. Common that you see around 0.35C. Ano yung ibig sabihin pa niyan? I don't want to go, I don't want to be too much, to be too much technical, but uh, pwede niya siyang i-view na kung 0.35C yan, ibig sabihin, gano'ng katagal bago mo siya ma-full charge? So, pinapakita lang niya na every hour, 35% ng battery ang kaya niya ikarga. So, kung gusto mo punuin yan, so almost 3 hours ang kailangan mo para mapuno mo yung, para ma-full charge mo yung battery mo. So, common right now sa mga lithium phosphate batteries, na around 0.3C, uh, na around 0.3C yung kanyang normal charging rate. Kaya nga siguro, uh, karamihan, ng pagkakatrash ka, it takes around 3 hours. No? Now, pero when, if you look at yung malilisyong titan oxides, yung mga mas bagong batteries, okay, normal charging rate is around 1C or even 2C. Okay. Now, meron ka naman tinatawag na cell peak charging rate. So, normally, ginagawa mo yan para um, um, nagtatrash ka at that rate para mabilis mong mapuno Pero it's advisable to most of the time charge using the normal charging rating. Okay, para hindi para, para um, mas mapahaba mo yung buhay ng battery. Uh, hindi na may na, na 
may iikli masyado yung battery life mo. Pwede rin ma- ma- mahaba pa rin naman yan. As long as hindi ka lalagpas doon sa specifications ng peak charging rate. Pero hanggat maaari, mas maganda ang you stick with the normal uh, charging rate. Okay. So common sa cell peak charging rate around 0.7C. Um, so this is for, for, for yung mga ginagamit sa tricycles. Or but it can go as high as 10C. So just imagine 10C. So kung 10C yan, every, every um, hour, parang tayo mo i-charge yung battery mo. 1, 1, 000, uh, 10 times yung size ng battery mo. So yung bilis ng charging mo is 60 minutes divided by 10. So around 6 minutes lang. Ano? So in 6 minutes, full charge ka na. Yun nga lang, medyo masyadong mahal itong battery sa to. Um, we hope to try it out sa i-roll out natin dyan sa PASIC na, na units. Okay, we're in... Um, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, di naman natin talaga sasagarin kasi uh, ginagamay pa natin yung battery. But it could be like 15 minutes, 30 minutes, then you're, you're, you're at full charge. Okay. Uh, pero yung pressure nito is around 3 to 4 times per kilowatt hour. So, so mahal talaga siya. Okay. Uh, then yung charging plug type, okay. common right now yung mga AC plugs sa mga electric tricycles. But I'm going to show you later on yung iba-ibang klase ng mga plugs. Now, cooling system, normally for electric tricycles, wala kang active na cooling system. Ibig sabihin, yung nagpapalamig talaga sa kanya, natural lang. Okay. Pero cooling system could be liquid type. Common to sa mga electric cars, electric buses, for in, parang mayro kang ref doon na nagpapalamig sa battery mo. Yun din, ang, yun din yung reason kung bakit itong mga electric cars ito, mabili sila i-charge. Kasi may cooling system sila. Eh. Siguro na-observe niya yan. Kung, kung, kung medyo nagkutingting kayo and sinaksak niyo yung battery niyo sa mas mabilis na charger, umiinit siya. And yung init na yun, pagka lumalagpas ka ng around 50-60 degrees Celsius, that's where the degradation of your battery starts. Iikli yung buhay ng battery mo, so dapat iiwasan mo yun. Pero kung meron kang cooling system, then you're able now to charge your battery faster. So sa mga sasakyan like electric car, electric buses, we're in masyadong malaki yung mga battery. So magandang mabilis kang mag-charge. Then mayroong mga active cooling systems talaga yan. It could be a liquid cooling system or forced air. So para mayroong kang fan na bubuga ng malamig na hangin doon, yun ang papalamig ng battery mo. Or natural, right? which is very common for electric bicycles. Ang advantage kasi ng natural type, mura siya. Wala kang added cost. Okay? Uh, the units that will be rolling out okay, in passing, uh, the vans okay, will have a liquid type cooling. Yung e-quads uh, will have natural cooling. Uh, yung mga DOE e-trikes, those are, those are naturally cooled batteries. So battery is only part, one part of your, of your uh, electric vehicle specification. You need also to look at the specs na motor mo. So Common na motor type is BLDC. Ano yung sabihin yan? Brushless DCs. So yung DC battery, motors, pwedeng brushless DC yan or, or, um, or brushed DCs. Okay, mas common yung brushless DCs. Okay? Kasi mas madaling kontrolin yung uh, brushless uh, DC. Okay. And uh, Pero pag pinag-uusapan natin is medyo malalaking mga sasakyan. Ha? Okay, most of the time, gumagamit na ng AC. AC motors. Kasi mas efficient yung, yung AC motors. Yun nga lang, mas mahal yung AC motors kumpara sa DC motors. Okay. Kaya ginagamit lang sa pagkakailangan talaga. Okay. So pagka pinag-uusapan natin, Electric jeepneys, electric cars, most of them he runs on AC motors. But of course, pero parang ibang like BLDC. Rated power, common for electric bicycles to have 2 to 5 kilowatts. Pagka less than 2, medyo, medyo mabagal na yan. Medyo mahina na yan. I won't advise that for a normal tricycle operation kung saan yung sakay mo around 6 or pataas. Because that should be fine kung yung capacity ng tricycle, ng tricycle mo is around 4 lang. Then, 2 kilowatts should be fine. Electric jeepneys, nag-arrange siya around 7.5 to 15 kilowatts yan. Uh, electric cars, okay, around 40 to 100 kilowatts. Electric buses, it could go as high as 400 kilowatts. 
Now, meron ka tinatawag na peak power. Okay, sorry, uh, 3.5 na ilagay ko doon. No? Normally, twice yan. So, kung fourth, pwedeng umabot ng around 8 kilowatts yan. Uh, normally, that's computed as twice, 1.5 to twice your rated power. Anong ibig sabihin? Anong pagkakaiba ng peak power at rated power? Ibig sabihin niya, pwede ka mag-operate at that point. Pero, speed second lang. Pero kaya niya. Pero pa nagtagal ka at that point, uh, kung walang circuit protection yung, yung motor mo, masisira yon iinit siya. Or, or um, mag, mag, magtatagal yan, pag nagtagal ka doon, pwedeng um, kung may circuit protection, ikakat off ng motor mo, yung, ng, ng system mo yung power. Okay. Para to protect your motor. And then your top speed, common na top speed sa mga sa mga electric trikes sa Egypt around 50 kil kilometers per hour. Okay. EV charging basics. So merong AC charging levels na tinatawag 1, 2, or 3. Nakalagay dyan yung mga rated power niya. So kung i-relate natin kanina, so titignan mo ngayon dito, ah, ano ba yung uh, charging rate ko? 1.5 kilowatts. So ibig sabihin, uh, that's classified as AC charging. Okay. Um, kung between 3 to 20 kilowatts ka, so that is now level 2. So yung mga home chargers, normally between uh, either level 1 or level 2 chargers yung mga yan. Yung mga chargers sa mga parking lots, maybe you will see that uh, sa mga videos or kung nakapot na kayo abroad, no? those are normally level 2 chargers, 3 to 20 kilowatts. And yung mga fast chargers, yung mga nakalagay sa mga gasoline stations or mga dedicated charging points, those are level 3 chargers. Now, yung mga level 3 chargers mo, pwedeng easy yan, but very common na uh, DC level 3 chargers, uh, DC chargers sa mga yan. Which also fur is further broken down into level 1, level 2, and level 3 chargers. Now, ang ginagamit to right now, I think it's mostly yung parang AC plug lang siya. Okay? But, kung gusto nyo medyo mabilis, hindi na ang pag-charge, hindi na uubra yun. Then there are standard chargers na uh, um, plugs na ginagamit. So yung, yung type 1 normally uses a type 1 SAE charger uh, um, plug. Yung type 2, ganun din, SAE type 2, two plug. And pagdating natin sa level 3 chargers, is either basis sa demo standards, CCS standards, GPT standards, and yung test time, meron siyang sariling standards. Kaya ito yung mahabang usapin right now. Ang problema kasi dito, dahil meron iba-ibang standards yan, pagka multi-standard yung fast charger mo, medyo mahal siya. So kaya may proposal na, okay, um, sa Pilipinas, gawin natin isang type of charger lang yung mga kotse. By the way, this only applies to cars, vans, and then bigger vehicles. No? So, so hindi pa makapag-decide right ng Pilipinas, pinag-uusapan, okay, nang mabuti kung mag-touch demo ba ang Pilipinas, mag-CCS ba yung Pilipinas, mag-GPT ba yung, ba yung Pilipinas. Okay, or, uh, right now, yung status quo is accredited lahat yan, depending ngayon dun sa charging provider, kung anong system ang gusto niyang i-offer sa, sa market. Pero yun nga, Del konti lang yung market mo po right now. Iba ibahin mo pa yung mga standards mo. So medyo magiging kung ang access is maapek mo yung access sa sa chargers. Okay. So these are uh, some of the basic concepts of electric vehicles. I would want to turn over you now sa Santa Rosa to discuss yung practical side. Okay. So thank you. Uh, Sam, maybe you can go online now. Thank you, Sam? Dr. Manny. Uh, so, hintayin natin yung kina Sam na side. Uh, so, yeah. again, uh, while Sam is setting up and ensuring na nag-off yung mic, mic uh, I can hear you, Sam. Ay, okay, nice. Good. So, uh, uh, one note lang to the participants. If you have questions, you can... Oop, uh, may feedback, Sam. So, if you have questions about your EV or may mga challenges na kayo based on your consultations with your uh, with the e users in your cities, uh, kung meron ng questions that 
have been submitted to you uh, yung common challenges ng mga uh, operators ano, and drivers of these uh, units. You can also put that in the chat box para ma-cover din siya sa discussion. So I will also put some of that some of those that I have received, uh, Doc Minis, I also received some from Phil Post because they've also tested a few units before. Uh, no? So I have two questions Pag here. I will also put that at, in the chat box. So, yeah. um, I, I will stop uh, so that some and uh, Dash are able to spotlight the video from there. <laughs> Uh, by the way, uh, Doc Mani, I have a question. So I, I received an EV operating guide. Do you think uh, I could put them in the chat box so that the uh, uh, kahit in text ko na lang ilagay? Good afternoon po sa ating lahat. Ako po si Paul Campos at ako po ang isa sa employee ng Tojo Motorsport. Bali, base po sa na-discuss kanina ni Doc Biona, um, Papakita po namin sa inyo ngayon yung ilan sa mga components na meron yung ating uh, electric vehicle. Makikita po natin ngayon ang ating front suspension. Ito po ay components ng ating electric uh, e-trike. Ng ating e-trike. Front suspension, dito po natin uh, kinoconnect yung ating uh, gulong na pangharapan tapos ang ating manibela sa kami mga disc brake din po tayo diyan. Yan po kung nakikita niyo po yan. Katabi po nating front suspension ng ating trans axle. Sa ating pong trans axle, uh, ito po ay may uh, usually po sa ating e-trike ay 12 is to 1 na ratio. Tapos um, dito po natin kino-connect ang ating motor. Base doon sa display kanina ni Doc Bio na ito na po yung pinaka-actual natin. Ayan po. Sa ating trans axle yan, makikita rin po natin mga, yung drum brake natin, tapos yung fami uh, familiar naman po tayo sa ating parts na ito. Tapos, on other side, dito po, makikita po natin um, ang ating motor. Ito po yung actual na motor natin. Sa e-trike po natin, meron po tayong uh, 3 kilowatts na ginagamit. Tapos sa ating motor, ay uh, iba-iba din po kada model ng ating uh, nilalagay sa ating unit. Ito po ay isang uh, AC type ng motor. Tapos ang next ay ang ating controller, motor controller. So itong motor, konektado po ito sa ating motor controller. Ayan. Na ang motor controller natin ay uh, may control sa ating reverse neutral at forward at nagbibigay din ng uh, bilis at uh, pagbagal ng ating e-trike. Ayan po, kung nakikita niyo po. Ito pong motor na to ay 60 volts para sa ating e-trike. Next po ay sa ating converter. Yan po. Itong converter naman po natin ito na nakikita natin. Um, ito po ay kinoconvert niya mismo yung 60 volts na power na galing sa baterya into 12 volts para po naman sa mga kanyang uh, accessories at sa ilaw ng ating unit. Ayan po. So, sa, sa amin po, sa Tojo Motors, iba-iba um, po naman ang nilalagay namin sa kada model ng unit namin. So, ito pong nakikita ninyo ngayon, ito ay ang uh, isa sa mga produkto ni Tojo Motors. Uh, modelo niya ay Lawin 2. Kaya tawag namin siyang Lawin 2. Ito po ay 7 seaters, kasama na po yung driver. So, 6 for uh, para sa mga pasayero dito sa likod. Tapos, isa sa driver. Tapos, um, ito pong unit na ito ay binubuo ng 60 volts na power na baterya para po mapagana natin ito. Ayan po, kung sa nakikita po natin ngayon, ayan, kukunan lang po ng ating... Uh, itong unit na po na ito na three wheels namin na e-trike ay 
um, na-deploy na po namin ito sa Naga. Yung iba po ay ibang model naman po sa Bracay. Yung iba ay nasa Coron. Um, tsaka sana dito sa Pasig. Tapos ang next po nating pupuntahan ay dito sa loob mismo ng ating unit. So titingnan natin ngayon sa loob ng ating unit kung ano ba ang itsura ng loob nating unit. So uh, meron tayo sa loob na parang pang, uh, pangkaraniwang motor natin. Um, kagaya ng mga motor natin. Pero ito since na electric siya, meron siyang uh, iba't ibang switches parang kagaya ng ating uh, sasakyan. So, eto sa bandang harapan, makikita nyo po. Ayan po. Bali, nilagyan na po namin ng label para at least sa pagkuha po ng uh, uh, video ay makikita nyo na po agad. Sa bandang gawing ano, uh, kanan, ayan, makikita nyo po dito ang mga switch So, ano ba ang dapat nating malaman uh, bago tayo magpaandar ng ating unit? Siyempre, kailangan nating alamin kung nasaan ang ignition switch. Ignition switch kung saan ay magpapabuhay ng ating unit. Pag on po ng ating unit, ito po, pag on po ay uh, magdi-display lang po yung gauge natin. So, sa gauge po namin, sa speedometer gauge namin, ay makikita nyo po yung speed yung distance uh, kilometer meron din po yung battery volts natin tsaka yung temperature po natin sa amin pong Egypt ibang klase naman po ng uh, gauge ang ginagamit din natin doon ayan po okay next po ay ang ating uh, voltmeter ito po Voltmeter po natin dito sa A-Trek natin ay uh, nag-indicate ng voltage ng ating baterya. Ayan po. So, so ba sa battery po natin, since 60 volts po ito, ang full charge po natin sa battery ay nasa 69 volts. Yung warning uh, voltage natin ay nasa 65 volts at ang empty natin ay nasa 63 volts. So pag once na alam na po natin na nasa 65 volts na siya, ibig sabihin, uh, konti na lang po yung maitatakbo niya, kaya uh, kailangan po natin i-charge agad. Ayan po. Tapos, next po natin na ipapakita ay ang ating reverse, neutral, tsaka, neutral, tsaka forward. Reverse, neutral, and forward. So, importante din po ito. Um, sa madaling salita, um, yung direction na atras, tsaka abante ng ating Uh, unit. Then yung accelerator natin. Sa accelerator po natin, um, pag electric po kasi uh, mga sir, ay hindi po yung makikipag uh, patentero tayo or makipagsabayan sa mga uh, normal na digas na sasakyan. So yung electric po natin, as mas mainam po at uh, safe po na banayad lamang po ang ating pagpiga nito kasi sa banayad na pagpiga po ay mas nakakakibig po ito sa baterya. Ayun po. Then yung handbrake. Uh, ito po, importanteng-importante po ito. Tinatawag po itong kill switch o kill stop switch or tinatawag din naming emergency stop switch. Uh, itong parte na to ay lagi po dapat na naka-on ito. Kasi once na naka-off po ito, ito po ay hindi aandar ang ating unit. Um, sa word na kill, ibig sabihin ay pagpatay po ng ating motor. Um, importante po ito lalong-lalo na sa ating uh, sa mga emergency. Um, kagaya na lamang na kung mawala ng control si driver, wag po tayong magpanik, patayin lang po natin itong switch na ito para hindi na po gumana ang ating unit. 'Yun po yung maganda sa ating e-trike. Then ang um, sa baba po, dito po naka pwesto ang ating uh, foot brake. Ayan po. Ayan. Nakikita po natin ang foot brake natin ngayon. Ayan po. So, pupunta po tayo dito sa gawing kaliwa ng ating unit. 
Etong gawin kaliwa ng ating unit, may iba't ibang switches din po siya, kagaya ng ating um, sasakyan. So, yung pula, dito sa dashboard, ito po yung hazard switch natin. Ayan po, gumagana po siya kasi nakikita po natin na nabiblink po yung nasa gauge natin. Ayan. Ito po, running light switch para sa headlight po natin. Tapos, yung ating doom light switch for our passenger switch. Ayan. Tapos, meron po tayong wiper switch. Ayan. Para lang po makita ninyo. Ayan. Then, dito sa left hand, uh, ano na to, left bar na to, makikita po natin yung signal light switch. Ayan po. Ang ating uh, headlight, high and low. At ang ating horn. Ayan po. Kung narinig niyo po yun. Tapos sa bandang ibaba po ay nakapwesto po ang ating parking brake. Ito din po ang isa sa mga makakatulong sa atin. In case of emergency. Huwag lang po tayong mataranta talaga. Ayan po yung handbrake natin. Um, next po ay ang ating... Saan po ba nakatago yung baterya ng ating unit? So, yung baterya po ng ating unit ay dito po mismo sa inuupuan ng ating driver. Yan po, itatakita lang po namin. Sa driver mismo, sa upuan ng driver. Bubuksan lang po natin ito. Ayan. Yan po yung ating battery compartment. Sa upuan mismo ng ating driver. At ang sa passenger naman, nakalagay dito sa ilalim ng upuan nila ay ang ating controller. Controller, yung fan, yung relay natin, and our converter. Ayan po, ito pa yung converter natin. Tapos yung relay, ito po yung ating controller mismo. Ayan, ito po nakakonekta po ito mismo sa baterya at sa ating motor para po umandar ang ating unit. Yan, bigyan lang po natin ng oras para makita nyo po. Sa mga uh, model natin na unit, um, hindi po pare-parehas yung pagkapwesto ng ating controller at saka ng ating mga baterya. Bali sa aming Egypt po ay nakalagay naman po siya sa likod sa ating uh, upuan ng ating passenger. So sa ilalim po nun, nandun po yung dalawang baterya kabilaan. Meron naman po tayong 96 volts na battery na nilalagay sa ating Egypt. Ayun po. So, yun po ang kailangan nating tandaan. Pinaka-importante lang po namin lagi na sinasabi na yung unit po natin ay kailangan uh, alam natin bago natin ito gamitin. At alamin natin kung ano po yung mga safety safety features para po uh, safe tayo pag nag-drive tayo. Yun lamang po. At um, aside po dyan, ipapakita rin po namin sa inyo yung uh, battery tsaka charger mismo ng ating unit. Meron po kami hinanda dito. Um, sample lang po ng battery at tsaka charger. Ayan po. etong battery tsaka charger natin ay iba-iba naman po. Sa amin po dito sa Tojo ay sa Egypt, meron kaming 96 volts. Sa aming e-trike, uh, it's either 72 or meron tayong uh, 60 volts na ginagamit. Ayan po. Ayun, nakita na. Sa ating battery, ang battery po natin, kagaya ng sinabi ni Doc Biona nandun kanina, isa po siyang lithium battery. Ayan po. 60 volts. So, depende po sa ating uh, battery rating. Sabi kanina ni Doc Bionan, uh, depende yung kilometer run nito. Sa ating 60 volts uh, battery, ang tinatakbo po ng ating e-trike na nakita niya kanina ay up to 50 kilometers po. 
Tapos, di siya kagaya rin ng lead acid na kailangan mo siyang i-empty muna bago siya i-charge. So, yung battery po natin na lithium, pwede po siyang i-charge pag uh, naabot na yung 80% na uh, depth of charge nito discharge nito para safe po siya. Tapos, ang ating charging time naman po sa lithium battery natin, uh, usually po uh, tumatakbo po siya na 3 to 4 hours naman po. Ayan. Tapos, ang ating charger, battery charger, ito po yung klase ng battery charger namin. Papakita lang po namin. Ayan. Atong battery charger namin ay iba-iba din po yung ratings ng ating charger depende din po sa ating baterya. So eto sa sample namin na ito, eto po kasi yung battery namin ng 72 volts. So yung charger namin ay meron siyang rating na 71.3 volts na merong 30 amps. Ay 87.6 dito sa charger na to sa actual 30 amps. Tapos depende rin sa ating baterya. Ang 72 volts ay may full charge na up to 80 volts to 81 volts. At uh, may warning or 70% uh, na 77 volts at yung empty niya ay 75 volts. So meron po tayong mga paalala pag nag-charge po tayo ng baterya. Kailangan po ay nasa wastong proseso po siya. Kasi meron po minsan na... Um, Nabibigla po yung ating pasok ng kuryente pag nagsaksak tayo. So, ito po, uh, nakakonect na po ito. Ito po yung connector ng ating battery charger. Ito po ay tinatawag na uh, YD32 connector. Meron po siyang 4 pins sa loob. So, kukonect lang po ito. Then, make sure lang po natin na hindi po naka-switch on yung ating uh, charger. Then, hello? good to uh, plug na po siya sa outlet. Uh, hello? Uh, excuse na? Uh, Sam, pwede po pa-check uh, ng video Pagka para nag-lag siya? Saksak mo po ng charger, makikita nyo po. Antayin lang po natin. Meron pong indicator ang ating battery. Uh, battery charger. Meron po siyang blue. Yung blue po na light indicator ay para sa ating full charge. Yung green po... Uh, Blue po para sa charging pala, sorry. Tapos yung green po ay sa full charge. At yung ating uh, red ay para sa error. Para sa ating error. Hello? Uh, hello? Uh... Sir, naglalag po ata or para nag-freeze po yung video. Hello? Ayan, okay na po ba? Uh, nakaharap pa rin po siya doon sa kaninang video eh. So, para nag-freeze po siya. Nag-freeze? Okay. Makakailangan okay, mag-reconnect uh, or i-reset ba to or paano ba yan? Ah, siguro mag-log out muna tapos mag-log in ulit. Ayan, parang ina, 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 pinapalitan ni... Kat, kung may mga questions, maybe I can answer them now. Habang nag sige, uh, sige, habang naghihintay. So we received kasi uh, some questions, pero I, I can post one of them now. So one of the question is that, what if masira ang battery five years from now? May mga alternative po ba na pwedeng pamalit na hindi mahal? Uh, or what if the battery is inoperable five years from now and are there alternatives that are not too expensive? So that's one of the questions we got from the city. Okay. Yeah. Actually, medyo mahal talaga yung, yung batteries. Pero but if you're going to add the cost of the batteries plus the... Uh, Plus the energy consume, yung cost nun, compared to gasoline, mas mura ka pa rin the long run. But uh, to, to answer the question, um, five years from now, marami kasing projections. In fact, nagkakatotoo naman, nagkakatotoo naman yung projections na yun ng mga, mga na-observe namin uh, from several years ago hanggang ngayon. Yung projections is uh, mga five years from now, yung presyo ng battery would be around 40 to 30% lower okay, than the cost uh, right now. Okay. Uh, yung mga 4.2 kilowatt hour na battery na lithium, 
Okay, that would cost you around 70,000 uh, right now. Um, but just imagine kung five years from now, yan, bawa sa ng 30%, that should be around what? Siguro bawa ba siya ng mga around 40 to 50,000 okay, by, by that time. Kaya, uh, and then, may mga business models din kasi where in, uh, you don't have to pay for the battery. You don't have to buy the batteries. Uh, rent mo na lang yung battery or release na mo na lang yung battery. Um, maybe that is something that, that you need to to look at. Uh, yung i-roll out na unit sa Pasig, eventually pag in upscale yun, ganun yung business model. So, bibilin mo lang yung unit and then i-release mo lang yung yung battery i-release mo. Hindi, hindi mo kailangan bilhin yung battery. So, mabababa mo yung initial cost and then um, para ka lang nag-renta ng battery na kapag in mo yung renta mo dun sa battery tsaka yung presyo ng charge mo, mas mababa kumpara sa kumpara sa um, sa gasoline nagkagastusin mo. And actually, yun ang mas fail safe kasi kung ma-premature mo masira yung battery mo, wala kang problema. Pwede mo lang siya pwede mo lang siya ibalik. Nagpapalitan lang yan. Yeah. Um, so, th- thank you, Doc Manny. Uh, may isa pang question. So, uh, yung kanina, di ba, we saw yung different parts ng ng EV. Meron, na, naapektuhan po ba yung battery kapag naarawan o nakapark siya sa mainit na lugar uh, uh, ng no, matagal, no, yung mga EV. So, does using the EVs under the sun and hot condition affect battery consumption of the units? Ang, ang, yung, yung battery kasi is parang pwede yung EVU na parang, ano yun, parang chemical. Hmm. Na in fact, magandang iwasan na umabot ng mga around 60 degrees Celsius yun. So, kung hindi naman siya maabot hmm. ng mga around 60-70 degrees Celsius, hindi naman siya maapektuhan. Pero kung maabot siya sa mga ganong mga temperatures, Mm. So, posibleng ano, posibleng mayroong konting effect yun. Pero hindi na, uh, hindi man naturally ganun na, no? Tama, tama. Oh, normally naman, hindi ka naman umaabot ng ganun talaga kainit. Maliban na lang, kung, kung, of course, kung tumatakbo ka, nag, nagbibigay siya ng kuryente, pwede, pwede siya tumaas, no? Okay. Uh, sige. Uh, we, we pause muna sa Q&A siguro. Okay. I, I believe from from... Uh, Sam, ready na, ran, ready na rin ata from Santa Rosa. Okay. So, balikan natin yung ibang questions. So, may mga discussions din tayo. Um, eto po, dito po tayo sa battery charger na kanina. So, naisaksak, naisaksak na po namin kanina. Uh, Doon yata kami na putol. Uh, ang pinakatatandaan lang po natin dito sa pag-charge ng ating battery ay importante po ay hindi po siya nakasaksak agad yung bat- ang battery charger natin para hindi lang po mabigla ang ating battery at saka yung charger. So, connect, connect po muna natin yung ating battery charger connector which is ito po itawag natin dito ay YD32. So, connect siya sa lithium battery natin. Tapos, make sure lang po natin yung switch ng ating charger ay naka-off before natin i-plug sa outlet. Okay. So yung po, mga paalala lamang po sa ating charger pag nag-charge tayo ng baterya. Yun lang po mga pinaka-importante nating uh, kailangang pakatandaan para makaiwas po tayo sa mga disgrasya. Tsaka always din po natin i-monitor yung ating battery once na nag-charge po tayo. Para hindi naman po sayang sa ating uh, kuryente. Pag fully charged po kasi, uh, nagkakarga pa rin yung kuryente natin. So, sayang lang po. Uh, yun lang po. Tsaka maraming salamat po sa ating mga pagpapakinig. Um, i- magpa- magkakaroon lang po tayo ng final view ng ating unit bago po tayo mag-off ng pan. Yun po, maraming salamat po. Marami pong salamat. Um, okay, siguro may iba pa 
akong questions, no? So, before I continue raising yung questions, uh, i-remind ko lang din, if may questions kayo, lagay nyo lang sa chat box. Pwede nyo rin naman pong verbally uh, erase yung mga katanungan ninyo and uh, our host can unmute you. Uh, especially those who are joining us from uh, the conference room, dun kina Sarah from Pasig Transport. We have about 22 participants joining us doon sa side na yun, no? So, if you have questions, uh, siguro i-direct nyo kay na Sarah at pwede nilang, nilang i-post din sa, sa chat box. So, yung isang question uh, is that um, ano po ang maaaring dahilan kung ang unit ay hindi na umaandar? So, what could be the reason why the unit's no longer operating? Uh, if Grohe Doc Mani or hindi ko sure kasi kung dirinig tayo ng team from Tojo from Santa Rosa. But uh, if Doc Mani, you're able to provide insights to this. So we also received some questions pa sa on-site. No? Uh, ilang taon na ang warranty usually ng batteries? Ilang kilometro ang kayang marating ng isang charge? Uh, and ilang oras ilang oras po ang inaabot ng fast charger bago ma full charge so yun yung mga ibang questions natin hindi hindi ko narinig pa bote <laughs> ah sige ah, sige so, pa ah, na, sige. Narinig, narinig ko lang narinig ko lang yung dulo no o ilang kilometro mm -hmm. uh yung sa eat right depende sa design ng sasakyan pero um pwede ko mapot ng mga 15 kilometers per kilowatt hour so, kung ang size ng battery mo, sabihin natin meron kang uh, 3 kilowatts na battery. So, pwede kang umabot ang around 45 times uh, 0.8. No? Ilan ba yun? Siguro mga around 40 kilometers siya. No? Kung, kung 3 kilowatt are yung battery mo and then uh, and then around 15 kilometers na tatakbo niya per kilowatt hour. So, mga around 45 uh, kilometers. Now, kung gaano ka bilis na i-charge kaya niya actually siya kaya siyang i-charge ng kung kung the normal charge normally around 0.5c so kaya siyang i-charge ng dalawang oras okay or um kung kung isasagad siya ng 1c kaya siyang i-charge actually ng ng isang ng isang oras so, yan yung current na ano yan yung current na, na normal normal sa mga nakakabit sa mga tricycles ng mga batteries. Okay. Pero, yung sa DOE e-trike actually, nakakabit ng Toshiba batteries. LTO actually yun. Um, kung sasagarin yon, kaya nga lang, nakalagay yata sa agreement, hindi nyo pwedeng sagarin. Kung sasagarin yon, ang rating actually nun is 10C. So, pwedeng-pwede actually na ilang minuto lang, mafo-full charge siya. Kaya nga lang, siguro hindi pa talaga masyadong na-test. Hmm. Pero theoretically, kaya ng mabilis yun. Pero yung electronics niya yata, hindi nakaset for, for that one. Pero yung battery itself, pwedeng mabilis na i-charge na yun. Uh, so yung related po doon is yung kunwari na i-charge na ilang kilometro kaya yung kaya may rating ng isang yun. So kung 3 kilowatts, uh, I think yung pinapakita right now na electric bike, mga 3 kilowatts yan. So, siguro mga around 40, 40 kilometers. Hmm. So, commonly, ito yung parang in, in terms of utility at saka passenger transport, uh, on average, acceptable naman siya. So, yun din yung na-notice oh, natin 30, sa... 40, mga 30, 40 kilometers. Uh, and then, dun sa warranty, ilan ang usual, uh, ilang taon ang usual warranty ng mga batteries na siguro na Hindi ko lang... In, siguro, I'll let Tosho answer that later. Pero uh, kung, kung sa mga electric cars, kung bibili ka electric cars, common yung mga 10 years, ganyan. Mm. Sa mga electric cars, sa mga electric buses. Yeah. Ah, so around, more... Around 10 years. So yung mga bigger units ito, ano? Or oh, kasi is... malaki yung investment po. So normally, tinataasan talaga nila yung, yung warranty. Uh, dito kasi sa mga electric tricycles, saka sa electric... Uh, Jeepneys, maliliit yung battery. So kung maliliit yung battery, charge ka ng charge. 
So dahil charge ka na charge, normally mas maikli yung buhay niya kasi sa battery meron kang tinatawag na cycle life. So kung ang battery, let's say ang cycle life niya is 1,000, ibig sabihin 1,000 times mo siya pwedeng i-charge. Eh kung 3 times ka nagta-charge in a day, so almost 3 years lang siya. Okay. Pero kung malaking range mo, katulad pinakita ko na 400 kilometers, sa isang electric car, hindi ka naman magta-charge every day. Sabi nga natin, every 10, 20 days kung gusto mo sagarin talaga. So, pwedeng, hindi, hindi ka magpapalit ng battery all, all throughout the life of the, life of the vehicle. Hmm. Uh, may dalawang, sig- siguro isang ano pa natin i-check din kung yung Tojo later maka-join sa discussion. Pero, uh, may two questions na medyo related naman. Hmm. Uh, ano po yung maaari dahilan kung yung unit ay hindi na umaandar? Uh, um, key number one, syempre, check dapat ma-check muna yung battery kung buhay pa yung kung buhay pa yung uh, battery kasi malaking chance na yun talaga okay, or pagka buhay pa yung battery dapat ma-check yung controller kasi yung mga motors naman very seldom na sisira yan so hindi, hindi normally nasisira yung ano yung yung motors so in mm. fact yung controller nga hindi masyado so it's really just as art it's really the battery Lalo kung pag pinaro up mo, wala malang ilaw or what. So chances are, it's a battery. Mm. Yung isang question naman, at ito, nagaling dito sa mga nakapag-test na ng uh, uh, electric three-wheelers or two-wheelers. No? So pag may experience daw na sudden acceleration or may difficulty speeding up, uh, ano kaya yung issue nito? Uh, possible ba na may, may problema lang sa unit na nakuha niya? Or possible ba na may hindi siya... May nakalimutan siyang i-check o inspect before using the EV. Siguro tanong ko lang, um, nangyayari ba yun all the time? Or may ma- ano yung cases na nangyayari? Uh, parang I remember kasi, ito, ay, ay, medyo isolated case siya na parang several uh, units lang. Hindi, kasi what, what I mean is, uh, normally kasi pag yung battery mababa na, yung charge, may hirap ng control yun yung sasakyan. Kaya, ba, kaya gusto ko tanongin kung, kung doon yun ba yung time na nangyayari? to medyo mababa na. May binabanggit ako kanina ng depth of discharge. So dapat pa-check ano ang recommended na depth of discharge lang ng battery. Baka mamaya kasi lumalagpas ka na doon eh. Kaya let's say nagsasabi lang yung depth of discharge, 80% lang. Kasi if you go beyond 80%, medyo mahihirapan ka ng controlling yung, yung sasakyan doon. Erratic na siya. Kasi medyo mababa na yung voltahing binabato. Kaya siguro medyo mapagal na yung takbo niya hindi ka na makapag-accelerate kasi medyo mababa na yung voltage. Sige. I, I think uh, ang pwede natin gawin doon sa question, we will revert back to the uh, field post team. Uh, unfortunately, hindi hmm. sila maka-join throughout dahil uh, the internet connection ata from their hmm. end din nahirapan. So, uh, tingnan natin kung may iba pang questions. Uh, in terms of uh, maintenance ng e-trike, uh, may mga recommended ba kayo na dapat laging i-inspect, laging i-check, uh, tsaka gaano kadalas? And ano yung pinakapagkakaiba na maintenance ng EV versus yung internal combustion uh, vehicles? Mm. Okay, although i-expand naman later to, no? But parang yung pinaka-normal na... Of course, maraming common. No? So yung mga mechanicals yun, very common naman yan. Eh. Yung sa gulong, sa suspension, it's, uh, it's, all, uh, it's all the same. Okay. So um, yung EV normally, it's maintenance fee siya. So wala ka naman masyadong mga kailangan uh, chicken talaga doon. But you have to be conscious kung madali nang madrain yung battery mo baka kailangan ng, ng palitan yun. Yun advantage kasi ng EV. Wala ka actually maintenance talagang kailangan uh, gawin. Pero siguro, you, you just have to be conscious kung medyo manginig na yung takbo. So maaring may problema yung motor mo. So more on, more on that one. So the motor and yung, kung mabilis ng pakapapakiramdaman mo. Ah, uh, 'yun actually yung ano, 'yun actually yung yung isang feature nung ano nung nung i-roll out natin sa sakyan. Na yung 
system, yung sasakyan, para mayroon siyang brain. Ina-assess niya yung sarili niya kung may problema ba siya. But for now, that, dahil sa mga ibang EVs, wala nito. Uh, kung ikaw yung operator o driver, papakiramdaman mo siya. Uh, lalo kung ano ba, parang abilis madrain ng ano mo, mabilis madrain yung motor mo. So kung mabilis madrain yung motor mo, medyo mahina yung arangkada. Okay, number one, pwedeng mechanical yung problem mo. So, ba, kung wala nang problema sa battery mo, no, medyo bagay yung battery mo. Pwedeng mechanical, check mo kung kung dumidikit ba yung preno mo. Baka mamaya nagdalak yung handbrake mo. So, parang katulad din talaga sa isang ano, sa isang uh, um, normal na, na tricycle. Pero ang pagkakayang isang advantage lang din is hindi mo, hindi mo kailangan mag-change oil. Kasi yun yung medyo mataas na cost eh, sa internal combustion na uh, engine. So wala kang mga change oil yung mga bagay na yun. Mm, but, uh, so, so kunwari, uh, ano naman? So punta tayo ngayon sa mga private user. Ano? So uh, hmm. uh, private use. so para doon sa mga tricycle o yung mga motor lang sa bahay, ano yung mga ibang considerations na kailangan tingnan in relation sa charging? Ah, importanteng importante kung ano yung charging rate ng kung ano yung charger rating mo kasi uh, ako I would advise kung mga tipong 1 one, one, one to 1.5 pa check nyo muna kung kaya ng bahay niyo lalo kung marami na kayong aircon marami na load yung bahay niyo so checkin nyo muna kung kaya lalo kung kasi normally pagka yung sa mga electric cars pagka bibili ng sasakyan normally dinilinyahan ng hiwalay yun eh Uh, kasi yung rating mo, pwede ka mga 6, 6 to 10 kilowatts yung mga home chargers. So medyo mataas yun. So nililinyahan ng, ng hiwalay. So siguro kung maabot ka ng mga 1.5, 2, 3 kilowatts, yun ang gamit mo sa bahay yun, kailangan mo ensure na kaya ng, ng mga outlets mo or ng electrical wiring mo kasi baka magkaroon ng, ng overload. Uh, pero pag normally, mga maliit naman ng mga motosiklo, around 500 watts lang siguro yun. 250 watts, then that should be fine. But you have to be conscious about your charger rating. Lalo pag mataas. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, I think ano rin siya, importante rin yun malaman dahil you know, as, as more and more people then nag, I mean, nagtetest din sari, ng sariling use yeah. nila, no? Uh, yeah. Now that with the COVID pandemic. So, 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 hindi ibig sabihin na pag yung plug, pwede mo isaksak, kasha doon sa plug. Oh, pwede oh, mo gawin. So you have to be conscious about those things. Okay, in fact, kaya nga pag mga 6 kilowatts, may hiwalay na siya na, ano, na plug eh. To avoid na pwede mo siyang isaksak kahit saan lang. Hmm. Kaya pinakita ko kanina, di ba, iba na yung kanyang plug. Special plug na siya. Pag mga 3 to 6 kilowatts. Oh, oh, okay. So, um, Uh, at check ko lang yung mga ibang questions uh, from the chat. Okay, so pwede kaya natin i-open yung discussion with the on-site kung meron bang questions pa dyan or reactions and suggestions uh, and, and other uh, feedback on e-tracks ano kung narin naka-experience na sila. Uh, baka pwedeng i-check natin with the team nila, Sara. Wala, wala pang sound sa Tocho. Naputol. Um, meron po kanina. Tingnan natin, ha. So, Sam, meron bang sound from Tojo? Well, if not, pwede natin i-check with uh, sa team nila, Sara, if they can switch on their, their mic or MP2. So, may question uh, regarding dun sa latest discussion natin kanina. So, kung 3 to 6 kilowatt, uh, ano yung mga modifications sa electrical system sa bahay o facility na kailangan i-undertake? So, aside from electrical, mm. uh, you know, aside from hiwalay na linya. Actually, uh, kung, it, actually, yung lilinyahan mo talaga siya, kung mga 3 to 6, kung, lalo kung mga 6 kilowatts ka. Okay, mula doon sa ano, mula doon sa pinaka main main, main line mo. Doon doon ka nakukuha ng ano ng ng kuryente. Kasi mahirap i-trace yung mga loading mo sa bahay. 
Baka mamaya na, naisaksak mo siya dun sa, sa linyang marami na rin nakakabit ng mga loads. So yun yung nakakatakot eh. So kung ganun na kalalaki, kailangan nyo talaga maglinya ng ano. Hindi, syempre kailangan mo lagyan mo rin ng sariling circuit breaker yun. Yung linyang, linyang yun bago pumunta sa, ano, sa, sa, sa pinaka-charger mo mismo. Sa home charger mo. Or doon sa plug kung saan mo isasaksak yung onboard charger. So, kailangan pa rin na circuit breaker na hiwalay. So, even actually doon sa mga pilots natin, uh, ito rin yung naging experience namin. Isa sa mga questions doon was, uh, since electric two-wheelers lang, maaari daw pong po bang lagyan ng uh, extension cords? no Kasi may saksakan naman malapit doon sa parking yan. So, I think yung naging discussion noon was, uh, baka hindi siya tama or baka delikado din siya na lahat parang extension cord extension cord no uh, kung may sampung electric two wheeler baka medyo delikado so siguro yung sagot doon is dapat to visualize yung muna uh, hmm. ano ba yung ilang kilowatt yung charger mo kung 500 ako uh, let's say 500 watts yung charger mo ano ba normal ang wattage ng ng laptop familiar ano ba wattage ng laptop to ba Um, ang TV yata is kay check ko ha kung ano yung wattage yung laptop. Maganda kasi ba visualize kung ano yung mga ano. Yung, yung laptop parang 50-50 watts. So parang meron kang sampung laptop. Mm. Uh, so magsasaksa ka ba ng sampung laptop sa isang sa isang sa isang linya? So maaaring hindi. Mukhang medyo masyadong masyadong bataas na yan, di ba? And then isasang ka mo pa siya. So, medyo nakakatakot. And then, yung mga extension cords naman, may mga wattage rating din yan. Eh. Kasi kung bawa, uh, nagsaksa ka ng, ano, nagsaksa ka ng tatlong 500 watts, parang ka nang naka-aircon nun. Yung, yung aircon mo, normally, may imihiwalay siya na circuit breaker, di ba? Medyo mataas na yun. Uh, may question po tayo na coming from homeowners association sa Pasig. Uh, salamat, Sarah. So, ano po ang pwedeng gawin sa e-trike? Uh, kasi in, ex- in their experience daw, um, pinalitan daw yung charger nila ng fast charger. Ang problema kasi, mun- kailangan daw munang palamigin yung e-trike ng 2 hours bago gumana ng fast charger. Bago gumana ang fast charger. So, nasa chat box din po yung tanong. At saan po pwede bumili ng accessories kaya ng brake pad? So, siguro two separate, uh, ano pala yun? So, uh, so, so um, i-clarify ko lang, Uh, so kung maga, ano, ano yung wattage ng fast charger nila? So dati hindi sila gumagamit ng fast charger tapos nag-try sila na mag-fast charge. Um, mm-hmm. so, so ganun ba yung nangyari doon? Kasi yung sa DOE e-trikes, pagkakaalam ko, parang yung electronics niya, hindi siya configured for fast charging. So baka baka eventually masira yung electronics. Yung battery, I don't think masisira yung battery. Yung electronics doon yung magkakaroon ng ng problema. Um, hindi ko alam kung hanggang kailan yung ano kung hanggang kailan yung warranties kasi pagkakaalam ko uh, mawawala yung warranty pag ka-convert mo, di ba? O pag pag nag-fast charging ka. But I would advise na pag nawala na yung warranty ipa pwedeng i-retrofit yung ano i-retrofit yung yung batteries ng DOE e-trikes para um, kakayanin niyo nang mag-charge ng mas mabilis electronics na yung kailangan palitan doon yung battery itself kasi that is a very expensive battery and it's one of the best batteries toshi ba yung batteries na nakakabit doon and um i think um na para nakita ko rito si Rachel of DOST. Nandito pa ba? Kasi yung uh, yung DO yung DOST may project sila right now with UP. Um kung saan nagde-develop sila ng mga parang retrofit kits and I think isa yan sa pinag-aaralan nila yung yung DOE e-trikes. Uh, pwede nilang pwede nilang um palitan yung electronics doon. Kay Tojo can also eventually do that once na pinag-aaralan. Okay, but for now, I think often baka may mga kits ang di ang UP for for that one to convert them into fast chargers but the battery the um, theoretically uh, yung battery ng DOE pwedeng 
magtagal siguro yung sa, sa buong buhay ng buong buhay ng ng electric tricycles theoretically based on specs of course ibang usapan kung may problema ang electronics niya or 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 may mga abuse na nangyari sa kanya sa paggamit so maaring ibang usapan yon but theoretically yung yung nakakapit ng mga battery siya pwedeng magtagal niya pwede siya magtagal na in fact hindi uh, ako napalitan So, uh, babalikan natin yan uh, later na yung sa, sa generally sa parts so sa A-Trike. Uh, yung isang question po nung sa homeowners pala ay saan daw uh, pwede usually bumili ng mga accessories like yung mga brake pad? Baka hindi lang familiar din yung ibang users at managers mm. nito. Um, yung sa, yung sa DOE E-Trikes kasi, supposedly yung BMAC dapat nagsusupply sila nun. Kasi for Tojo Motors, pagka nag-roll out yung Tojo Motors, may mga service center siya. Normally, ang Tojo Motors pa nag-roll out, Uh, may ka-partner siya na let's say kooperatiba doon na nagpagtatakbo ng, ng mga units, nag-decide na bumili ng Tojo units and merong minimum number sila. Pag na-meet yung minimum number na yun, nag-set up yung Tojo na service center doon sa area. So for example, sa Naga, sa Boracay, may service center yung Tojo doon. Yun na rin yung ano, nagdebenta na rin ng mga spare parts doon. And doon yung pwedeng ipaservice yung units. I'm not sure with BMAC. BMAC kasi gumawa ng DOE e-trikes eh. So maybe you have to check kung saan yung mga service centers ng BMAC. I'm sure meron din sila nun. But uh, hindi lang ako familiar kung nasaan. Mm-mm. Sige. Uh, so siguro yun uh, maganda rin ma- ma- ma-check mo yung feedback after nung session natin kung uh, pwede nilang matingnan dito. May question And so, pa. So maybe one thing na kailangan tingnan when you get an e-trike if kung may, mm-hmm. kung may ano talaga kung mayroong uh, technical support kung known for providing a technical support yung yung company. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oo nga, yung mga after sales ano. Uh, may questions tayo rin na nanggaling sa sa Toda. Okay. Uh, ilang taon ang buhay ng battery ng e-drive? Pwede ba ito isulong sa baha? Ah, uh, ilusong sa baha. Yeah. Uh, ang sagot ko lagi dyan, kung saan mo, kung saan mo pwedeng ilusong yung yung isang ordinary yung motosiklo at tricycle kaya, kaya ng electric tricycle yun. Kasi for example, yung motor nun, uh, uh, mayroon tinatawag na mga protection codes, eh, coding, yung mga electronic components. Uh, pag sinabing IP67 certified, yung isang electronic component, ibig sabihin yan, pwede siyang isubmerge sa baha. So siguro kung, kung medyo baha in yung lugar nyo, yung unang itatanong nyo doon sa mag mag offer ng, ng unit. IP, ano yung, ano yung IP rating ng motor nito, ng controller nito, ng, ng, ng battery nito? And kung laging baha doon and tingin nyo, isusulong nyo siya, you have to ensure na IP67 yung at least yung, yung rating ng mga components na yun. So IP67. For Tojo, alam ko, yung motor at uh, motor and controller are IP67. The battery naman kasi um, hindi siya ka-IP7 kasi normally battery nakaangat yan eh. mm. sa taas. Pero yung motor niyan, it's, pwede mo isulong yan kasi IP67 yan. Um, yung, yung question dito, uh, yung next, is medyo related naman to. Uh, so, so that is one of the common questions na nare-receive din namin, mm. no? yung pwede yung ilusong sa baha. So yun yung check-in nyo kung ano yung IP rating. Uh, so IP rating okay sige uh, yung next is uh, related to sa discussion din kanina so gaano kalaki ang kinokonsumong kuryente para ma-full charge yung mga battery ng e-trike so baka okay. o e-trike din so, so first you have to check ano ang ano ang ilang kilowatt hour yung e-trike battery so example lang diba, na check nyo yung DO e-trike is 5 kilowatt hour so kung 5 kilowatt hour yan Ibig sabihin, and normally, hindi mo naman kinakusuma ng buo. Meron ka tinatawag the death of discharge. So let's say death of discharge mo is 80%. So yun yung recommended sa battery pack na yan. So ibig sabihin, ang pwede mo ikusuma out of the 5 kilowatt hour, it will just be 4 kilowatt hour. Kasi 80%. So 4 kilowatt hour, uh, Ganun yung papasok na kuryente sa battery mo. Pero meron ka tinatawag na charging 
efficiency. So hindi lahat ng 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 kinukuha mong kuryente mula sa outlet mapupunta sa battery mo yon. So normally ang charging efficiency is around 90%. So ibig sabihin meron kang 10% na losses. So kung kukumpitin natin para ma-full charge may isang 5 kilowatt hour battery na yung depth of discharge is 80%. So 4 kilowatts yon, 80% of 5 kilowatt hour and then di-divide mo yun ng 0.9. So ilan yun? Um, 40 divided by a uh, 4 divided by 0. 0. 0.9 4.44 around 4.5 kilowatt hour yung ikukusumo para ma-full charge so kung sabihin natin 10 piso or ilang pagkano ba 9 pesos sa limbawa yung per kilowatt hour mo or 10 piso na lang para mabilis so 45 pesos yun yung gastos mo for every full charge 45 pesos siya uh, so yung discussion sa atin maraming questions on the battery side nilipunta naman po ah. sa controllers um, may mga maintenance concerns ba na kailangan uh, i-consider para doon sa mga controllers kasi Turbally controller hindi naman siya nasisira basta properly uh, um, protected siya that's number one then number two uh, properly ventilated siya. So if you look at halimbawa kanina nung pinakita yung sa Tojo, mayroong fan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh. So, uh, pero I think lahat naman ng supplier tinitest nila yan. And then actually marami, marami dinadaanan na ano yan, trial and error. Like dito ko lalagay, lagyan ko ng fan, gano'ng kalaki yung mga gano'n. Uh, para makuha yung tamang configuration. Kasi nag-umiinit yan eh. So yun yung mga kailangan yung tignan. Hindi dapat pwedeng sumobrang uminit yan kasi at some point, pag uminit siya, mayroong, may mga para to protect itself, may mga automatic shut off yan. So yun, importante na ano. Hindi naman siya masisira, pero mag-automatic shut off yan. Mga lang, ang sa paglalamig yan, tsaka kauli mga katakbo. And then ganun din, mayroong overload protection yan. So kung... Kung uh, sumusobra yung, let's say, paakyat ka, hindi niya kaya, mag-off yan on, on its own. And then, importante rin na matignan nyo na tama yung match ng controller with the, ano, with, with the motor. Kasi pwedeng malaki yung motor mo, maliit yung controller mo, hindi mo rin ma-maximize yung, yung, yung motor na yun. So, dapat tama yung, yung mga match ng mga, ng mga, ano, mga, ng mga, um, sizing mo. Okay? And also, tat- tatlong bagay kasi normally sa isang electric truck. You have the battery, you have the motor, you have the controller. Okay. Kung mahina yung hatak, this is kung walang problem, ha? design issue lang. Kung mahina yung hatak, it could be, and then malaki yung motor mo. Yung problem mo could be yung controller mo, mababa yung rating, or pwede rin naman yung controller mo, ayos yung rating. Pero yung battery mo, mababa yung rating. Dapat kasi tugma yung yung tatlong yan eh. Ang problema mo is pag yung controller mo, battery mo, uh, motor mo, okay yung rating, yung battery mo maliit, ang tendency, iinit yung battery mo. So you have to make sure na tama yung ano mo. So uh, siguro, to, to, give, to give a simple calculation, kung ang discharge, but kanina may panero ko pinakita, charging rate, so yung 0.5C, 1C, di ba? sa sa uh, discharging may ganun din. So titingnan niyo rin sa battery, ano ba yung discharge rate ng battery? Kung nakalagay sa discharge rate ng battery is 1C, ibig sabihin niyan kung ang battery mo is 3 kilowatt hour, ang kaya niyang suportahan ng motor is 3 kilowatts. Kung 1C siya. Kung ang ang rating ng battery mo is 2C, yung motor, uh, ang kaya niya supportahan ng motor is could be as big as 2 times 3. Kung, kung ano siya, uh, ah, sorry, sorry. Kung, kung 2C siya, and then 2C siya, and then meron kang 3 kilowatt motor, ang minimum battery size mo should only be 1.5 kilowatt hour lang. Kasi twice ng kilowatt hour niya, yun yung rating ng motor na kaya niya supportahan. So, posible yung maliit yung battery mo, laki ng motor mo. So, hindi lang sa motor and controller yun. 
So kung mahina yung hatak, baka and then di match, baka kailangan malakayan yung, yung battery mo. Uh, so kumbaga, yung mga question, kasi dati alala ko, may questions din kami na-receive pala uh, tungkol doon sa mga, kunwari si CBD magde-deliver, no, na kailangan mag-park yung mga sasakyan sa basement. Ang, quest, ang, ang concern nila kung EV, kaya ba nito umakyat mula sa basement? I think yung rampa kasi doon sa ibang CBD oh. na buildings. Uh, so it's more of it, kailangan talaga matingnan yung... Kailangan oh, matingnan na yung matching match. ng lahat. Oh. Dapat kaya ng tatlong component na yun. Meron isang hindi kaya doon. Uh, parang, parang weakest link yan. Kung ano yung weakest link mo, yung ganyan doon lang siya. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Ah, uh, okay. Magandang ano yan, uh, insight din to. Eh, oh, marami po eh. I think pati sa ibang LG na received din namin yung question na kung magde-deliver sa uh, I think ito coming from Phil Post naman na marami din silang dine-deliver sa CBD sa Ortiga Center mm. or kunwari. Na yung ibang uh, ibang mga rampa at or ibang basement parking um, masyadong we can, we can We can actually compute kung ano yung minimum na Na, na power rating mm-hmm. ng motor mo kung gagamitin mo siya in doon sa mga applications na yan. Yeah. So we, we would just need to know ano yung angle ng steepness and ano yung speed mm-hmm. ng pagkakyat na gusto nyo. Okay, mm-hmm. then, yeah, but then we can, we can, we can compute ano yung minimum power na kailangan. Okay. Uh, tingnan natin kung may questions pa. So, so Sarah, uh, in case lang na meron pa dyan, ako rin titingnan ko rin from our end. Kailan po recommend yung battery swapping? Anong mechanics nito? And, and yung possible effect niya sa cost? Um, okay. Yung battery swapping, um, depende sa, sa operations mo. Um, yung, meron, meron, meron kasi several options. Pwede kang gumamit na maraming battery at then sa gabi ka nalang magka-charge. Okay. So kung ang panaglagay ka na maraming battery sa sakyan mo, hindi mo kailangan mag-swapping, hindi mo kailangan mag-charge at midday kasi malaki nga yung battery mo. Yung advantage nun, syempre mahal ngayon yung initial cost mo kasi malaki yung battery mo eh. And also, uh, dahil malaki yung battery mo, mabigat yung sasakyan mo, mababa yung energy economy mo. Malak- medyo malakas ang konsumo mo ng kuryente kasi mabigat yung marami kang battery sa dala-dala. Uh, yung second option mo is meron kang isang battery pack doon and then meron kang then meron battery pack for 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 swapping. Um, it, right now, yun yung recommended kung hindi naman masyado malayo yung pinupuntahan mo but normally within the vicinity ka lang nung kung saan ka nag sa swap. And um, depende sa business model ng supplier. May mga suppliers wherein sila yung nag invest sa second battery pack. So parang ang nangyari, yung bibili ng, ng e-trike, kasama yung isang bat, bibili niya kasama yung isang battery, and then si ano si si supplier ng sasakyan, the state Ocho Motors, magtatayo siya ng battery swapping station, and siya mag invest sa second battery pack and, and uh, nire-rentahan lang yon, Nire-release mo. So, hindi mo binibili. So, yung advantage nun, uh, mas mura yung upfront cost mo. Okay rin yung energy economy mo kasi hindi ka nung kabigat yung sasakyan. Pero, merong added charge yun na in such a way na in the long term, mas maka, baka mas makamura ka pagka, pagka um, enough na yung size ng ng ano mo ng ng battery mo kasi kasi meron kang babayaran tao doon na magpalit saka mag magtanggal ng ano eh ng battery that is added cost at the shop ko magpapalis ng battery um dapat may, may meron ano yan meron merong tubo yon may tubo yung yung battery so it will depends kung kung kaya niyo mag-invest uh, sa sarili niyo pack if you can invest if not you can do, do swapping where in your second battery could be leased by the uh, supplier or or kung limited yung initial um, funds din yun, pwede yung dalawang battery sets na yun could be actually leased out by the by the operator uh, by the supplier of the of the vehicle. So depending kung ano yung kakayanan nyo, 
financial capacity and ano yung operations uh, operations niyo and then you also have to look at like paano ka ba nag-ooperate ko ang battery pack mo has a range to say of 30 kilometers and in a day 60 kilometers yung tinatakbo ng isang mm-hmm. ng e-trike niyo you have to look at your operations nagla-lunch ka ba or may mga break times ka ba during the day carry in pwede kang mag magsaksak in between that that could be an option parang you get the best of both worlds magaan yung bat magaan yung sasakyan mo at the same time you have you don't have to pay for for swapping services you can charge on your on your own pero yun nga applicable lang yun kung meron kang mga null time na ganun pero kung tuloy-tuloy yung gamit mo hindi obra talagang you do battery swapping now uh if you have funds to invest then you use a fast charging battery 15 minutes you get charged so kahit maliit lang yung battery mo mabilis siyang okay lang maikli yung range pero of charge ka ng charge no problem kasi mabilis pero yun nga lang yung cost ng battery mo be around 2 2 to 3 times yung cost mo so it depende sa pa how you anong operations mo ano yung financial capacity mo um, those these are things that you have to consider mm-hmm. So uh, actually dito rin po mapasok no so pagka describe ni Doc Manny yung uh, importante maintindihan din how the operations are ng mga potential users saka ng mga current users kasi uh, doon eventually ma-determine din together with the city ano yung suitable na uh, kumbaga charging na a de deploy and and then there are also issues like ah magaano ako may meron mer- mer- pang invest mag mag uh, mag Mag fast charge ako. Next question, meron ka ba charging network? Fast charging network? So parang useless na gumamit ka ng fast charge batteries kung wala ka na mga fast charging network sa, sa sa area. Baka it's better na you just, kasi kung two, 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 three times yung cost, didoblahin mo na rin yung battery pack mo. Then you don't have to charge in between. So th- these are things. Ano yung infrastructure, ano yung financial capacity mo, ano yung operations mo. These are things that you need to consider. Uh, maraming salamat. I think titingnan natin ulit yung mga questions. Okay, parang lahat naman po ng mga katanungan na address na. I-double check lang natin kung meron pa. Uh, if if meron, gusto naman mag-verbally mag-intervene. Ah, teka, tingnan natin. Ah, okay, kick it off. Uh, ano yung pagkakaiba ng life po sa lead batteries in terms of weight at lifetime usually? Okay. Ay uh, as I've said yung cycle life ay yung life ng sasakyan ng isang battery uh, literally based on the cycle life. Okay, number of charge na pwedeng mong gawin. Yung lead acid normally is nasa 300 to 500 cycles lang. Hindi yung phosphate, hindi yung batteries. Okay, normal yung 1000. Uh actually right now normal na yung 2000, 3000 and uh, it could go up up to 6000. Now, yung lithium titanate oxide, yung mga LTOs, could go as high as 10,000 to 30,000 yung, yung cycle life. So doon sa bagay na yun, malaki yung difference talaga in terms of, in terms of the um, cycle life. In terms of weight, uh, it could be like one half the... Okay, I'll, I'll check out. Okay, power... But I think my estimate is... Um, Around one half, siguro. Ah, okay. Yeah, around around yun nga. Around one half. Yeah. Or it could even be, ano, it could even be more than half. Pero normal yung one half na, na weight difference. And, um, of course, the weight affects the energy economy. No? So kung, kung gagamit ka ng lead acid, mas mabigat ka. Mas mababa yung energy, mas, mas mataas yung energy consumption mo. mas maikli yung buhay ng battery mo. Plus the fact that um, may binabanggit ako kanina na discharge charging efficiency, mababa ang charging efficiency ng lead-acid batteries. Siguro around 80%, 80% kung ang lithium mo is around 90%. So, so mas matipid na yung pagta-charge mo kasi mataas yung charging efficiency mo, mas magaan yung lead-acid mo and mas mahaba yung buhay. So in fact, if if you do a life cycle costing, you eventually end up with cheaper with with the lithium phosphate batteries. 
Eh, yun nga lang, uh, mahal yung initial cost. Mo. Okay. Uh, dun sa mga, uh, in terms naman po nung sa standards, no? so ito in terms of selection naman, may recommended po ba kayo na kailangan tingnan o hanapin na mga standards kapag tumitingin ng motors and batteries? Mm. May merong may merong ano, merong uh meron na right up mga PLS on on batteries. In fact, we discussed nga kami kanina, isa sa mga priority 'yon na gagawin na siyang uh, regulations. So eventually when that happens, you have to look for the PLS ceiling. Na uh, pumasa siya sa sa local ano ko. Pero nga may mga usapin pa kasi na sino magtatayo nung nung on facility so may 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 garong ganong mangyayari right now para feasibility study nitong mga itong mga test uh, test facilities sa to okay but but for now um anong may merong may merong seal eh I, i can forward that okay may merong uh, international na electronic na seal na para masiguradong kung pumasa siya doon kung certified din yung battery mo ay yung motor mo then It is something compliant to the international uh, standards. I'll, I'll check on on that specific na ano specific na na seal. And then of course, yung IP rating. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you can you can search that sa net. Ang IP67 is pwede mo isang purge. Or but of course, medyo mas mahal yan. Meron mga IP5, IP4. Um, IP6. So IP5, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's pwede siya mas flash ng tubig, pero hindi mo siya pwede isubmerge. So, pero kung ang application mo naman, hindi, hindi mo na-expect na masasubmerge yan. So, that, that should be fine. But kung tingin mong high risk for submerge sa baha, at least look, you have to ensure na IP67 compliant. So, kung wala nang questions, uh, wala na rin questions no, from the city Uh, from the side ng Pasig Transport. So, siguro um, with that, uh, we will end our day one there. Uh, we had a really good interaction, a lot of uh, Q&A. Uh, may mga questions that I'm sure that will uh, spring out of your minds in the coming days. Pero ang gagawin natin, then we will compile that. We can, of course, uh, uh, consult our experts and our trainers Uh, to continue this conversation because anyway, as uh, as Anton has mentioned earlier from the Pasig Transport team, uh, very consultative yung process that we are seeking for the pilot uh, demonstration and for the developing the prototypes and the design of the system. No? So uh, we will continue with that and we will continue with this process. And uh, if I may ask support from Nash to flash the, the next step, siguro, uh, we will just also want to uh, present to you the, over, the overview then of the week. So join us again uh, tomorrow uh, for a specific discussion naman on the regulation. So it's going to be a hybrid in a sense that it's going to be a training and discussion then where we are going to look at um, balancing e-mobility, safety, and access. So how are EVs managed outside of the Philippines? Tingnan natin ano yung mga ibang policies and regulations, no? especially uh, at the city level, what can be adopted and what are the opportunities and usual challenges uh, in terms of balancing safety and access. Uh, on Thursday, uh, we are going to specifically focus on the EV charging. So a lot of questions uh, on charging today. Uh, and also yung Philippine setting. No? So we're going to tackle a bit more on the charging uh, infrastructure and setting that up and planning for that on Thursday. And on Friday, we will specifically talk about the uh, different e-mobility uh, and different modes and uses that are uh, that we can see now on the ground. No? So that includes the e-trikes or public electric three-wheelers. That also includes the shared mobility devices. What are they? What are the innovations that we foresee or anticipate coming into our cities? Uh, what are the usual challenges and the charging requirements there? Uh, then we'll also look at the enterprises and small to medium enterprises, uh, corporates with business business fleets, uh, what are the opportunities for e-mobility from that sector? So those are three areas that we'll look 
at uh, on Friday, and then we'll specifically discuss uh, what are the different roles and applications after having heard uh, insights from those three uh, modes and sectors. So that is also we encourage you to. Um, uh, inform your colleagues uh, from uh, from the city, from the LGU, if you are also looking to, if you're not from Pasig City and are and have been exploring e-mobility in your cities or are currently working on that, uh, I, we believe that you will also benefit largely from this discussion. No, uh, not uh, again, as we said, this is not just for Pasig City. So this have uh, a lot of these topics, a lot of the questions are coming out of the the needs assessment that our partners from pa PASIC Transport have conducted over the last year within PASIC City, but uh, the discussions, the training, the topics that, uh, uh, that we have shaped and uh, somehow uh, compiled and then created with this, uh, through this training program is uh, applicable to a lot of LGUs or local government units in the Philippines. So uh, please also join us if you're working uh, with PASIG or in PASIG, uh, if you have projects um, uh, with different LGUs in, in the Philippines, please also join us or disseminate to your network. So with that, um, I think uh, that is the last slide that I have. Is that the last slide? So yes, so on behalf of the Solutions Plus team, uh, thank you again for joining us today. And uh, thank you all to, to thank you also to, to Pasig Transport, to Anton's team, Sarah, Vance, they are also on site, on different sites, I believe. Uh, we're also joined by Wuppertal Institute uh, from uh, Berlin and also Doc Manny, Board, who's also joining us uh, in the next few days. No? So you'll also hear from uh, the rest of the team in the coming days. So see you again tomorrow and have a good afternoon. Thank you, everyone.